welcome. It's back, baby. It's Friday. Oh, we are here for that. We are here to get you into that weekend spirit. Happy, happy Friday, happy babe. Happy Friday, indeed. Well, listen, if you're still maybe watching us from bed, maybe you want to stay right there because today we're also celebrating World Sleep Day. I know something we all would love to get more of, but we're going to talk about the importance of sleep, the impact it has on your mind, your body, and your immune system. Wow. From breathing techniques to temperatures of your room, wow. we've got you covered and I in fact I need tips on what the right temperature is because hubby thinks he read or heard in a podcast you need to sleep in 19 degrees celsius so it's got to be cold I am freezing cold he's every right. night so no. he's right I have a feeling we're going to prove him right I'm here for you but I got your back um, that of course we are whipping up all things lacquer in the kitchen this morning this week has been amazing we're going to round it off in style and we're going to push the boat out a little bit why because we are going to create a potato salad with condensed milk. We've actually Ooh. used condensed milk, I think, in everything this week, and it's been amazing. I didn't know that was an actual combination, but today we're going to find out. And then Zozo is going to whip up her nostalgic chocolate crispy treats. Oh, it's something you're going to love, and it's something you do not want to miss out on. And then, of course, we're also entertaining us ahead of the weekend. We've got the dancers from the Cape Town Carnival. I was in Greenpoint yesterday. They were busy setting up the, 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 you know, getting the barricades up. So it's going to be a treat treat this weekend uh, it really is gonna it's gonna be lacquer that's yeah. what it's gonna be so stick around for that and of course i am not alone today i am the thorn among the roses and of course anel is going to be keeping us up to date with all things jawsy right now um because we get to connect with her which is a great way to start your day morning hun Good morning, beautiful family. Hello, Cape Town, and hello, Zanzi. To the beautiful showroom here at Samsung in Johannesburg at Design Quarter. One of the things we love most about getting to come here every single Friday is making sure that your weekend starts off on the perfect note. And we do that, of course, with only the best in the business. So it is going to be a good time indeed, as the beautiful Zoe and the amazing Graham have told you. But we, of course, also want to hear from you on the social media streets, my love. And this is why we need you to go and check out the Good Morning Post. So, do the right thing and use hashtag Expresso Show as well as coming through with that voice note and let us know on World Sleep Day, how do you ensure that you in fact do get a good night's sleep? So I have a couple of friends, someone I know actually reads terms and conditions. You know the terms and conditions that apply that you never ever know what they are. They go and find on whatever product, whatever deal it is and they read terms and conditions until they fall asleep. I know for me, good music will always do the trick. Something nice, something slow, uh, maybe even something from the 90s. 20s, you know, <laughs> something just to get me into that good rim cycle. However, you got to come through. Let us know. How do you ensure that you get a good night's sleep? That and a whole lot more is coming up right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. For now, though, the beautiful Zoe is standing by for your news headlines. Oh, Zanele, I am loving the hair. Well, let's quickly take a first look at your headlines, starting with national news. South Africa's manufacturing sector, it showed significant improvement in January compared to January 2023. Data from Stats SA shows that manufacturing production increased by 2.6%. The largest positive contributions came from the petroleum, wood, textiles and glass sectors. Seasonally adjusted manufacturing production increased by 0.2% in the three months ended January compared to previous three months. Seven of the 10 manufacturing divisions reported positive growth rates over this period. And Gauteng Premier Panyaza Le Sufi has reiterated the province's plan to scrap ETOLs by month end. This follows widespread confusion of the project as all involved have shared conflicting information. During the State of the Province address, Le Sufi said they had reached an agreement with the Ministers of Finance and Transport. However, Finance Minister Enoch Godongwana told Parliament's Joint Finance Committees that Gauteng has not met the preconditions to allow for ETOLs to be scrapped. But speaking on SABC's Morning Live, Le Sufi said that come next month, ETOLs will be history. And a representative of the Kuriga community in Nigeria, where some 300 primary school children were kidnapped last week, says it's impossible for them to collect the ransom because the families of the children are poor. The kidnappers demanded hundreds of thousands of dollars this week. The Kuriga resident says most families cannot even afford three meals a day and will not be able to raise the large amount. It's understood the gang said they kidnapped the children because some of their members and their livestock had died in military airstrikes. 
And Denmark has announced plans to extend military conscription to women for the first time and increase the standard service time. It also wants to boost its defence budget by some $6 billion in the next five years to meet NATO's targets. Tensions in Europe have spiked since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. The Danish government now plans to introduce female conscription from 2026, making it only the third European nation alongside Norway and Sweden to require women to serve in the armed forces. And in anticipation of the upcoming Olympic Games, Paris has unveiled the stunning tapestry near the Eiffel Tower. Crafted by the talented French-Iranian artist Mar Marjane uh, Satrapi, the nine-meter-long triptych portrays Olympic athletes in action against the backdrop of the iconic tower and the Parisian skyline. Fashioned from wool and weighing 60 kilograms, this masterpiece took three years to complete. Satrapi humorously recalls feeling initially skeptical when commissioned for the project. The artwork, a testament to her skill and dedication, will be showcased in a venue at the Place de la Concorde starting from the end of June, offering spectators a captivating glimpse into the spirit of the Olympics. Well, that's where I leave those headlines. Let's get a first look at your sport with Graham. Thank you so much, Zoe. On that inspiring note, let's bring you an inspiring headline, certainly for Liverpool fans. They delivered a stunning display last night, netting four goals in just 14 minutes during a dominant 6-1 victory over Sparta Prague in the Europa League tie, securing their spot in the quarterfinals. So despite already leading 5-1 from the first leg, Jurgen Klopp fielded a very strong lineup, clearly sending a message, and they reaped the rewards as they marched towards a potential quadruple in his final stint as their manager. Now, now let's uh, turn to some rugby awards, and this one will warm many hearts. Springbok Lok Yaban Etzebeth achieved a rare feat by clinching SA Rugby's Player of the Year award for the second consecutive year at the prestigious SA Rugby Awards and thoroughly deserved. He's been titanic. Joining him in the double triumph was a rising star who's still rising, Kanan Moody, who secured the Young Player of the Year award for the second time as well. Then a shining star at the moment. Talk about putting your hand up. Libby Janssen van Rensburg shone in the women's categories earning recognition as both Springbok Woman and Provincial Player of the Year for the outstanding contributions she's delivered in 2023. She is a name to watch, and I think franchises across the world are certainly keeping their eyes open. Well, speaking of which, let's stay with rugby now for some more great news. The Sharks have announced the return of Springbok centre Andre Esterhazen to Kings Park. And that's, of course, from the Harlequins as of next season. So his return to South Africa is motivated by family reasons, leading to an early release from his contract with the Harlequins, which was set to expire in 2025. Esther Hazen's prolific performances at Harlequins, including a pivotal role in their Premiership title win in 2020 and 2021, certainly have helped to shape his role as a springbok, but they'll highlight his valuable contributions during his time in London. And of course, it's going to make a big difference bringing him back onto local soil. And now we turn to tennis and Yannick Sinner's on fire. The reigning Australian Open champion continued his remarkable form by storming into the semi-finals of the ATP WTA Indian Wells Masters. With a commanding 6-3, 6-3 victory over Czech, Yeri Lacheka, Sinner extended his unbeaten streak to an impressive 19-0. So this remarkable run includes a flawless 16 on the record in 2024, and that stretches back to last year's Davis Cup finals. Sinner's next challenge awaits in the form of Carlos Alcaraz. It's going to be a bit more of a test. Of course, he secured his spot in the semi-finals by defeating Alexander Zverev 6-3 and 6-1, also making it look relatively easy to make it through in the quarter-final berth. And that's where we leave our sport for now. Brand new day, foot of the weekend. Let's see if there's any weather news and what the temperatures are looking like. Thank you, Graham. Well, today's weather across much of South Africa will be characterized by warm to hot temperatures with the possibility of thunder showers. The SA Weather Service has issued two warnings for today, a yellow level one for severe thunderstorms resulting in heavy downpours, excessive lightning, damaging winds and large amounts of small hail. And that is expected over the east of the northwest. 
And secondly, extreme high fire danger conditions. That's expected over most parts of the Northern Cape, the Central Karoo and the Langeberg municipality of the Western Cape, the northwestern parts of the Free State and in places over the Dr. Bayos New Deer and Walter Sisulu local municipalities of the Eastern Cape. That's your weather news. Let's take a look at your temperatures. Let it go. Come on, 39 degrees. That is crazy. Uh, hopefully we can temper it by keeping you indoors um, with some great content, yes, and a great opportunity. Why? Because we're making it rain. Well, hopefully in your world, making it rain. Lots of cash this March with a guaranteed, oh, this is a biggie, 84 million rand in the Powerball jackpot this Friday. You got to play now and you could bag the big, big one. It's Yo. seriously big. Now buy your tickets today. You can buy it in store on the national lottery.co.za website, as well as the mobile app through cell phone banking or by simply dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for ussd mm, and we will keep all of those details and maybe some hints on how you can spend that money on us on our social media platforms uh, but you really have no excuse we've got your plug-in you've just got to put yourself in the running to win the millions in fact it's a, a life changing that'll change everybody around yours life for 84 million rand guaranteed in that powerball jackpot and it could be yours but you've got a panda push a play good Definitely. luck we are taking a quick break. When we get back, we're going to give someone a Grape Friday. In fact, we've got 2,000 Rand to give away, so don't go anyway. Mm, it could be yours as well. And then, of course, we all need a little more sleep. I think there's some exhausted bodies, tired eyes out there. But we're going to get into the relevance of a good night's sleep in just a moment, and it might surprise you. Stick around. Don't go back to sleep. <laughs> It's my feel-good breakfast show.
Welcome back. Hopefully you are still in bed and you've just rolled over and you're nice and comfy, but you're not allowed to go back to sleep just yet. But it's important that we talk about sleep. In fact, sleep is the state we must enter in order to fix that which has been upset by wake. I love these words made famous by author and scientist Matthew Walker, and it rings true in our world. We don't need to be told how important sleep is, surely by now, when you're trying to make it through the day after a bad, bad night's sleep. I think you know all about it. And this 15th of March marks World Sleep Day, a vitally important one to highlight this. And this morning we are joined in studio by Dr. Dale Ray, Director of Sleep Science and Associate Professor at the University of Cape Town to discuss the connection between sleep and our health. So many facets of our health. Doc, thank you for getting up so early this morning, but you did say you are a morning person. <sighs> You have chosen to make this your life's purpose. So I would imagine there have been a couple of major penny drop moments that have kind of awoken you, excuse the pun. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Why is sleep so vitally important? What's happening within our body when we shut our eyes? So I kind of view it as a future insurance policy. Oh, I like about that. About the, the things that it can do for us. Um, because it's a little bit like the, we can abuse our, it's very easy to abuse sleep. Um, many people do and our bodies are super resilient and robust and we can take a little bit of abuse but over the long term this is going to catch up so ultimately it's critical for survival that's um, no small thing <laughs> and um, it's we know if I were to summarize it's critical for mental health and it's critical for physical health in the long term so the better we sleep the more um, productive we're going to be and the better our quality of life is going to be but in the long term we're less likely to run into trouble and so from that perspective, I think it's really key. It's a biohack. It's a daily biohack that I think we often miss in that sense. We're always looking for the big thing, that massive mountain to climb, but it's something you can literally do every day. So much of life feels like you're borrowing from tomorrow as opposed to investing. In, and when I speak about health, if you do something today, generally it's going to cost you tomorrow. I love the fact that you can invest in that future model. How does it work though? What is going on within chemically, physically within our body that does that restoration? Why is it so important? Cool, so we're actually a little bit in the dark to be completely frank with you, but we know a little bit. So one of the things that happens when we sleep is that um, all of our neural pathways that we made use of in the daytime get um, reinforced. So the way to think about it is your, your brain is like a, a collection of super highways. For sure. And so all the little neural pathways that we made use of in the day get reinforced at night. So how does this translate into being helpful to us? Well, it helps us lay down or embed memory, which is obviously super important. If we're learning new skills, then we um, embed or entrench those skills as well so that they become automated. So you spoke about your driving route and the autom or sure, how automatic yeah. that is. There are times where it feels like I haven't woken up yet and I'm still driving. <laughs> You're on yeah. autopilot, absolutely. So that's one aspect of it. The other thing is that there's a huge amount of housekeeping that happens when we sleep, which removes toxins from the brain. Now these toxins uh, are metabolic byproducts. It's quite normal for them to build up in the daytime, but we have to give our body the chance to remove them at nighttime. And one of the big things that we've um, learned about recently is something called beta amyloid. So there's a lot of talk about this beta amyloid because they see in people with early um, signs of Alzheimer's or neurodegenerative diseases that there are higher levels of beta amyloid than perhaps would be wanted. Oh, wow. And so we um, are thinking that when when we sleep, the, the brain actually is able to remove these um, uh, toxins, beta amyloid being one of those. And so the protective effect over time is that perhaps we are able to um, prevent early neurodegeneration and early signs of, um, of Alzheimer's, for example. So that is absolutely critical. So when I speak about investing in the future, we're all very, very concerned about This is like a life insurance health. policy. Yeah. It's, it's, it really is a massive one. And it stands to reason our body is designed to do amazing things. The major stress comes when we're juggling the balls while we're conscious, trying to manage all of these various elements. Yeah. And our brain gets tired. You've got to defrag or whatever you want to see it as, <laughs> but the brain needs to get that work through. I love that. We often don't connect the dots and, and there's no silver bullet here except doing this maybe consistently. But when we start to see links between our immune system and our quality of sleep, suddenly we are connecting two completely mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. systems and it's this aha moment. How does that work? Why are we healthier when we are sleeping more? Cool. So that's another sort of background story, which is very um, interesting. There are two main parts to your immune system, if I can be very crude about it. The one part is your innate, innate immunity, and that defends you against viruses and pathogens that you're exposed to in the daytime that you would absorb or ingest. So 
that that makes sense. Especially this time of the year. They're, yeah, exactly. They're, they're coming at us. They're coming <laughs> at us. Yeah, about good old COVID and that. <laughs> but what happens when we sleep is your immune system switches roles and the um, adaptive immunity becomes more prevalent. And that does a couple of important things. On one hand, this part of your immune system trawls your body looking for damaged and mutated cells mm -hmm. and it destroys them. And this has obviously got a very um, specific anti-cancer effect for in terms sure. of tumor um, development. The other thing that happens is your immune system is really busy at nighttime while you're asleep, making the antibodies that you need to defend you against those viruses. The little army that needs load. to go to work tomorrow. Totally. So if you're shortchanging yourself on sleep, potentially one of the things that you're doing is um, not giving your immune system the time that it needs to basically do its job. And that's why we notice that when we've become chronically sleep deprived, you'll sort of start to feel that little slight crash. You know, your throat oh, gets sure. a little bit sore. And you kind of feel a little bit like, well, I wonder if I'm going to go down. And then very often you do. Um, I'm dying to know quality versus quantity. We're going to pick up this conversation in just a moment. In fact, you can weigh in. Let us know on our social media platforms your key to getting a good night's sleep. Do you have a mantra? Do you have a process that you go for? What allows you to get into that rested state because it is so important? This has been a mind-blowing discovery so far. We're going to continue down that path. We are talking about the vital importance of sleep this morning. Please don't go back to sleep. Stick around. Thanks, G. Well, when it comes to a parent's greatest victory, it is seeing their child free from pain. And Panado is giving you that victory and more with a chance to win 2,000 Rand cash. All you had to do was tell us one of the four additive frees that the new grape is free from and tell us why Panado grape is the clear choice for you as a parent using that hashtag power to fight pain and hashtag Panado essay on our social media competition posts. And it's time for us to congratulate our next winner. Can I get a drum roll? Because we're gonna say, congratulations to Tabi Seng Sentle. You are today's lucky winner. This is what Ntaba Seng said. So they said, I love that it is free from alcohol. It's effectively relieves pain and reduces fever in my kids. And the grape flavor makes it more palatable, which makes it easier for me to administer the medication when needed. That is why I love it. And it's a clear choice for me as a parent. Hashtag power to fight pain. Hashtag Panado essay. We actually have Ntabi Seng on the line. Good morning. Morning, morning, morning. How are you? Very well. Not as well as you. Congratulations. That 2,000 Rand is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I wanted to know from you, what's the best thing about being able to care for your child's health and to, to, to be that person for them? Ntabi Singh? Hello. Hi. Yes. I just... Um, we just want to know, what are you going to do with that 2,000 Rand? My, my daughter will be going for an operation soon, so I will be using the 2,000 towards that to buy her more comfortable and warm place. Okay, so yes. it's definitely going to come in handy. And tell me, what are some of those must-haves for you in your medicine cabinet? Definitely Panado. Ah, yes. definitely. Well, listen, Tabi Seng, congratulations. That 2,000 Rand is yours, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thank you. You too. There we go. Having your amazing children by your side, it really makes you an automatic winner. But to stand that chance to be one of our next lucky winners to win 2,000 Rand in cash, thanks to Bernardo. If you want to know how to enter, here's how. Panado Grape gives you the power to fight their pain in a new flavor that tastes great. I mean grape. To celebrate the new grape taste, this 4th to the 15th of March, Panado offers you 10 chances to win 2,000 Rand cash. Just answer the questions on the Panado post on Expresso's social media pages using hashtag PanadoSA and hashtag power to fight pain. T's and C's apply. Panado Grape, it's a clear choice in fast pain and fever relief. Uh, congratulations to our latest winner. Stick around on Monday. We'll make another person 2,000 Rand richer. Uh, but of course, today we are talking about the 
ultimate wealth, the investment in your future, sleep, because it really does matter. So we're going to continue our incredible conversation, delving into quality versus quantity, what it's going to take for us to get a good night's sleep, then give you a couple of practical examples. Maybe yoga or something along those lines is what you need to quieten your mind and quieten your body so that you can get that ultimate good night's sleep that you need. Don't go back to bed. You need to hear this. We'll see you in a moment. Great! I mean... Welcome back as we dive right back under the covers and then don't go back to sleep, but we continue this conversation. Sleep is an essential aspect of our lives, playing such a vital role in maintaining our overall health and well-being. There are so many different angles to look at this from, and we're back with Dr. Dale Ray, Director of Sleep Science and Associate Professor at the University of Cape Town, to deepen our knowledge about sleep. So before the break, uh, I put it to you, quantity versus quality. What is the sweet spot here in terms of the amount? I know it could be different for every person, but how much time should we be devoting to sleep? And how do we know that the quality is right? Those are also great questions. Everyone's always obsessed about um, the duration of sleep, so the, the, the quantity. It's always the eight hours, at least eight yes, hours. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's the thing they say, oh, you know, you, you should be aiming for eight hours. Well, that's actually probably quite rubbish. As you've mentioned, there's <laughs> inter-individual variation. We're all a little different. The, the thinking is that to promote optimal physical and mental health, it's somewhere in the range of 79 hours in terms of duration, but some people need as little as six and others need as much as 10. So there's actually a huge variation and our variation changes as well. We have a different need depending on circumstances. It even changes seasonally. So that's one side of it, but actually the quality that you speak about is probably key. And I would say I would take shorter, better quality sleep. For sure. Um, hands down, absolutely any day. And so quality sleep refers to a number of things. It refers to how consistent your sleep patterns are. So our bodies absolutely love rhythm and routine. For sure. So that's really important. And um, we like continuous sleep. So sleep which is broken or fragmented feels very light and that's not restorative. And the other thing that people don't think about when it comes to quality is sleeping in sync with your body clock. So you'll be an evening type or a morning type, for example. The best sleep is when you're sleeping aligned with your own body clock. So morning types, early to bed, early to rise, that's absolutely brilliant. So basically saying I'm failing in every facet of this, <laughs> this journey through life. But no, thank you so much for <laughs> highlighting that so well. I suddenly feel so exhausted. I don't know why. Um, no, the funny thing is, I mean, I probably get away with about four hours generally, which people are always so shocked to hear. But when you've got young kids, you, you work very full days. We, I often work in 48 hour cycles. What saves me is my body getting used to doing that. And I know you can't hammer yourself like that for very long, but we've been doing, everyone who works in TV pretty much does yeah. this to their bodies. And it's amazing. I'll wake up with this feeling of like, I'm so tired, but I know I can do this because I've done it before. And my body gets used to that rhythm. And there are a couple of things you can do to kind of activate and wake yourself up. The problem I don't have is falling asleep. I could literally fall asleep talking to you now. Some people really struggle. Mm. What are the optimal sleep conditions? Zoe was um, saying she meant to 19 degrees. Her dear husband is making her sleep at, at night. She says mm -hmm. she is freezing. Is cold better than heat? How do we get the perfect night's sleep in terms of our atmosphere? 
So from an environmental perspective, temperature is definitely quite a big thing. Um, we kn we've just all been through one crazy hot summer. For sure. And I think everyone can um, relate to how difficult it is to fall asleep and to stay asleep when we're too hot. So at the end of the day, our body temperature is meant to drop. And so it's useful if the environmental temperature is cool as well, because that's a really good sleep signal to, uh, for our We for said our cool, not sleep. freezing. Not freezing, cool. no. <laughs> so it differs for different people. Um, but it's also really important for some people, they're very light sensitive and they're going to do better in a, in a darker environment. I mean, there's some people that can sleep underneath a spotlight, okay? For and sure, those are the yeah. exhausted peeps. But for the rest of us, we tend to enjoy dark spaces, cool spaces, like quiet spaces. Sleeping in a hotel room where they've got like triple blockouts <laughs> and you don't even know what province you're in. It's yeah. like, ah, I absolutely Perfect. love that. I'm thinking a big issue that we have is the adrenaline up and down, our emotions. I would imagine hormones play a role in that part, particularly in within women. How does that affect you? What's going on in your body? You can't just switch everything off and go to sleep. Yeah, exactly. So we need a sort of a transitionary stage. So when we're awake, we want to be superhuman. We want to be firing on all cylinders. And you're quite right. There's a lot of adrenaline sort of driving us, especially when you're skating by on four hours of sleep per <laughs> night, I'll just add. Thank you. <laughs> and so um, for those of us that are super busy in the daytime, you absolutely cannot be grafting up until 30 seconds before bed, slam down your laptop cover and hope to hop into bed and have a great night's sleep. You're going to struggle. So we need to decompress. And I think this decompression is actually a really important part of transitioning from being a very busy person to winding down at the end of the day. So making sure that we can sort of prepare this runway into sleep I love so that, that your yeah, mind yeah. sort of starts to slow down is really important. And the other thing that um, you touched on there is around sort of a very busy, active mind and maybe stress and emotions number one destroyer of sleep in people who don't have a, a known sleep disorder is stress. Of course, stress, anxiety, worry. It tends to infiltrate into sleep in those sort of one to three You wake up thinking about exactly the same thing. You fell asleep thinking about and you yeah. wonder, did I ever stop thinking about it? Um, I get that completely. I'd, I'd love you to debunk some myths here because, um, you know, thanks to the internet, we are all experts when it comes to sleep and there's a meme for, for everything. But maybe give us three of the biggest misconceptions that you'd like to knock out of the, the water right now. Sure, okay. I think one of them would relate to the eight hour thing. Okay, eight hours, it's not necessary for everyone to get eight. We have variation. It's quality, quality, quality. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, probably um, an, another thing that people want to experiment with is sort of polyphasic sleeping, but you know, it, it works to sleep in sort of um, multiple periods sort of throughout the day, whether it's two, three, or four sleeps, so that people do like a very nap oriented approach. That's, um, we're diurnal creatures, which means we're designed to have one consolidated nocturnal sleep. We're not designed to sort of spread our sleep out too much. Um, we can chat about naps another day. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about a nap right now. Yeah. It's, it's there, it's there, but out of necessity, not out of wants. And then, and then um, lastly, yeah. Yeah, people um, always are looking for sort of hacks into sleep. Like, what can I take? What can I eat? What can I do? Um, in order to to improve my sleep. There are actually not a hell of a lot of hacks, if I were to be very, very honest. There isn't any food that has been shown to promote better sleep um, with great uh, levels of certainty. Um, I think that's much more around making sure that you're in a good um, mental health and physical health sort of condition so that those factors don't intrude on or impair sure. your sleep. You can't reverse engineer it. There is a reason why we benefit so much from these things. And you know, I call it the ultimate biohack now, just listening to these amazing gems that you've given us. It's an opportunity for us to feed into our optimal health every single day. You don't have to take a pill. Well, there are pills that can knock you out, but will they give you the sleep? No, you've got to be, that's a manifestation of your health. And I love that. Thank you for making this your life's purpose. Um, I'm dying to know whether the doctor's going to be taking a nap a little bit later today after this early morning. The bottom line is, is you have to protect your brain, you have to protect your body and allow it to do what it needs to do to heal yourself and sleep is vital. Sleep is definitely vital and we also want to make sure we take and tap into all different techniques to get the best possible sleep. So this morning we're diving into the realm of yoga and breathing techniques to improve sleep quality. We heard that quality is so important. Now joining us is yoga expert Chantal Erfurt, shedding some light on how these practices and aid in achieving a restful night sleep is all so important. Chantal, it's great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Hi Zoe, it's great to be here. 
breathing exercises, that is obviously very important to calm you down and to get you into a, to, to, to get you ready for a good night's rest. So I believe you're gonna take me through a bit of a breathing exercise. Yes, so Zoe, um, Dr. Dale was talking about paving that way to a good night's sleep. And one of the things that we need to do is calm the body and the mind. And so what we're gonna do is, and it's a little bit weird to do it first thing in the morning, but we're gonna calm our minds and body by pairing some breath and movement. So we'll start off standing in what we call Tadasana, mountain pose. And as we breathe in, slowly raise your arms up, taking in a quality breath. And as you breathe out, gently allow the arms to move towards the side of your body. Make it a mindful movement in and slowly out. This time as you take your arms up, slowly breathe into the count of four. Bring your palms to touch and exhale to the count of six as you bring your palms to your heart center. One more time into the count of four. Bring in the palms to touch and out to the count of six. Gently allow yourself to fall forward, hinging at the hips. And allow gravity to pull you towards your mat and swing very gently, allowing the breath to deepen. And then bring yourself down onto your knees. And the thing to remember about this is if it's not comfortable or accessible for you to sit on your knees, you can also do this on a chair. Okay. And one of the things that's very effective to relax is to put your hands on the mat in front of you and rest your forehead on the mat. While staying on your knees. That's right, if it's comfortable for you. You just breathe very, very deeply into that stretch. And if you want a chair, you can place your hands on your knees and rest your forehead on your hands. Breathing all the while. And on your next breath in, raise yourself very gently. And come to a seated position on your mat. You can either have your legs crossed or you can have them in front of you. Always find a place of comfort for yourself. You okay. don't want to be hurting yourself. Definitely And not. let's take those arms up again, pairing the breath and movement. And this time we'll move into a gentle twist. Exhaling, taking the right hand to the left knee and the left hand behind you. Sitting up tall as you inhale and gently twisting. You wanna get rid of all that stress in your body before you turning in for the night. And let's inhale, center. And exhale, twisting to the left, to the right. as you gently come back to center, inhale. And as you exhale, give yourself a big hug. <laughs> Lifting up your elbows. You wanna show yourself some love before you go to sleep. Your body's been working all day, your mind has been working, and gently relax. Place your hands on your knees. And if you're sitting in bed, you can be sitting up against the wall, legs in front of you. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. How much time should you focus this routine on? Or how much time should you, for how long should you be doing it? Breathing is a wonderful way to relax. So we all love relaxing, but we all have different amounts of time to relax, Zoe. So 
even if you have five minutes or four minutes, you know, a very short period of time like we have this morning, it was, it's going to be effective. So you take your moments where you can find them. And before bedtime, you do it as long as you need to relax. And um, once you've done a little routine like this, you can lie in your bed, on your back, breathing deeply, focusing on the breath. Maybe even listen to your breath, because your breath sounds a little bit like the ocean, and you know how calming it can be mm. to listen to the ocean. Definitely, definitely. Now, we are focusing on quality sleep, and we heard Dr. Dale say that not everyone can get eight hours of sleep. For you, how much do you need where you realize this is the optimal amount I need to do what I need to do to get through each day? So I sleep about six to seven hours every night. Um, I often feel like I could do with more, but I also meditate during the day, and meditation is a very effective way of calming your body and bringing yourself into a near state sleep mm. where you calming the mind and as dr dale said also our mind is often what's keeping us out of sleep definitely okay well you are a yoga expert Chantal. <laughs> so tell me where can people get in touch with you if they would love to explore the practice of yoga more okay so i teach at tukai yoga studio on a thursday evening i also do some one-on-one -on -one classes and you can find me on social media at Edited Eating. Well, there we go. Thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for showing us how we can calm ourselves down. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed this routine. Perhaps you did it with us, but now you know how if you find yourself in a position where you can't calm down before bed, you've got the perfect routine for that. Oh man, I don't want to speak too loudly to destroy the calm, but the hit makers are skipping it after the break. EQ is going to drop an absolute banger that will wake you up. So hopefully you have had a good night's sleep. And then, of course, if you're getting ready for work and you need to, to get the face beat, we have got some perfect tips on getting the perfect foundation done perfectly. I love it. And I also get to wake up with Carl Kugelman, uh, one of my favorite celebs from Tropical Island of Treasure. I love it. Stick around. See you now. Celebrate World Sleep Day with Restonic this 15th of March on Expresso with a chance to win one of 10 Restonic Bazaruto queen size beds, each valued at 5,999 Rand. Retailing at this price until the end of March. So to enter, WhatsApp the keyword Expresso to 011 298 9999 and tell us Restonic believes in the power of sleep. True or false? Competition closes on March the 15th. T's and C's apply. It's my feel-good breakfast show.
Welcome back. You're on your Feel Good Breakfast show right here on S3. And this is the home of superstars. Here on Expresso, we always make sure that you start off your weekend on the perfect note, which is why we had to bring one of the people who is behind one of the biggest songs in the whole entire world. Yes, not just South Africa. I'm talking about one of the vocalists on Chwalabam, which is, of course, none other than EQ. At the moment, Chwalabam has got over 12.6 million streams across streaming platforms, as well as, are you listening to this, over 2.6 billion views on the TikTok challenge. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we got to give this guy a huge round of applause. Please welcome to Expresso EQ. <laughs> how are you, Superstar? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank yeah. you. Hey, is that how Superstar sits? Yeah. I'm chilling. Okay, you know? okay, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to chill when yeah, yeah. all of the superstardom is happening. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, dude. Thank you. You guys are doing so incredible. And I, I want to take it to the beginning because I feel like, yes, we're here now. Yeah. But you're somewhere. Yeah. A young man from Limpopo, Limpopo's finest. Ish. Where did your love for music come from? I don't know, like I grew up in a musical family. Like, yo, my family loves music. Guys. Yeah, they always play music. I have an uncle, Uncle John. Yes. Ha. <laughs> you guys always play music, bro. Yes. You wake up, like it's music. It's like, Go yo, to sleep, music. music. What yeah. kind of music was he playing? Like, you know, Pina Tamanyaro, like from yes. Yeah, oh, that I guy. And then he loves also old school music, like. Yeah. Yeah, so. And, and he was able to be part of making the product yeah. that is EQ and Google. Because every love... time you wake up, it's like music, 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 music. Yo. It's like, beautiful. I, yeah. I love it because for me, I feel like the people who are around us always inform who we are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you had a love for hip hop. Does he play yeah. hip hop as well? No. No. Uh, okay. I mean, my uncle is old school, bro. Yes. Like, he's old school, like he's like my dad. They all they play like old school music, gospel, whatever. whatever. Yeah. So I just had to build from that. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I'm a youngster. I'm just out here vibing, you know. Uh, and and vibing to hip hop is where you started. Yeah. Right? So now tell me, where did you find the genre that you are now, and and what made you love hip hop particularly? I mean, like, growing up, well, hip-hop was the thing when mm. I started making music. Everybody wanted started... to be a rapper. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we started there, and then I just had to, like, I don't know, indulge into the I'm a piano scene. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, with a lot of influence from other people, like, yeah. like yo, try this thing. You know what I'm saying? People okay. like Young Stana like, influenced, like, you know. And there's them telling me, like, yo, try this thing. Really? Yeah. That is so dope. Yeah. Uh, I like that. And also, I feel like when we talk about music, there's always you having to work with people. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, you don't grow as an you artist, grow, necessarily. Yeah, so, okay, true. you are somebody who has worked with the legs of Uncle Waffles. Mm -hmm. You've worked with big names. Tell us about that. Where did that come from? Nah, Kai just, I mean, Zeus. Zeus and Kai actually hit me up. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, Poison, since you guys got this Zotata, because we released Zotata first, yes. me, me and the boys. And then they're like, yo, since you guys got this thing, though, we're trying to like, you know, uh, finish Uncle Waffle's project. So pull up to the studio, let's have like a song. We didn't plan for it to be like that huge after having a huge song. Yes. You know, like just like a month after, then we do that thing. So we got to the studio, Waffle there, everybody there, Tony. I was just in PC and then we just did that thing and then yeah. yeah it's just a good thing. Ah. Small things. No, it's industry. not small things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Not small, but like, you know what I'm saying? So we just yeah. had to do that thing. Yeah. I think it's so beautiful. And also, you're so young, dude, and you've done so much already. Ish. Yeah. Really, and how are you feeling about it at the moment? I don't know. I don't know how to feel. It's just. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're just in the moment. Yeah, I'm just yeah. chilling. Yes, chilling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the likes of Jason Derulo are currently it's, doing your guys' yeah, challenge. Bad, yeah. So talk, talk to us about Chalabam. When you guys did it, did you know that it was going to possibly fly? No, mm. we didn't know that thing. We you were just like, it's another track. Yeah, because that's, that's, I feel like that's what happens with a lot of hit songs. Because even Kekeleza, when I did it with Folka, mm. we didn't know it was going to like... Like, I don't Do know. It, it just happens. Yes. You're just in studio. I feel like just... It's like studio exercise. You're just being in studio every time. Yeah. Trying to just limit the noise of like outside people. Just do your thing. And, and just be a superstar. No. Yeah. No, thanks, thanks, EQ. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that we are able to experience your talent uh -huh. because I feel like some people are afraid to put themselves out there. So shout mm. out to you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is only the beginning. So yeah. and see I heard you, it's, your, it's your birthday today. It is my birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you, EQ. Yeah. But you're not going anywhere. We have uh, to for my birthday. Oh, for your birthday, for my birthday. Me, no? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to be uh, filling in over here, doing the things <laughs> as a backup dancer. This is why we have got EQ in the house, honey. He is not going anywhere. It's still going to be a party as we go on into the weekend. But right about now, the Cape Town family, Zoe and Graham, are standing by. Stick around.
So it is that time of the year again. If you didn't know it, maybe the taste of marshmallow and chocolate upon your tongue is what's going to get you there. Easter season is here with Beacon Mellows. Mm -hmm. You've got to say that many mmms because it's that mm, delicious. Definitely. Ooh. Now, what's your favorite way to eat a milk chocolate mellows marshmallow egg? All at once. All at once. Okay. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. Are you? Are you a chocolate picker? Do you? Oh, chocolate? It depends. It, it depends on the mood. <laughs> you know, you get those people that feel the need to to peel the outer chocolate layer off first and then dive in. You get some people that just munch the whole thing in. Yeah. Some people manage to take a bite and be delicate about it. But there's just so many ways to enjoy your delicious melon. Yeah, maybe, uh, as is often done on this show, as many as you can fit into your mouth. So I absolutely love that as well. So I think one has to, uh, of course, put our theories to the test to, to see what kind of a mellow egg eater we are. Thank you to okay. our beautiful assistants. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, and he steals a marshmallow. Okay, we <laughs> have some right. delicious strawberry flavored mellows here that is also covered in chocolate and coconut. I so can I can I reveal something? Okay, so we were on pain of death not allowed to taste these when this amazing new flavor emerged in our feel good studio. So this is actually the first time that I'm having one of these. Okay, I I take my mellows and I literally just. Do so you want to hear the little bit of a crack? I think eh? about. Wow. You see, I, you could be forgiven with, with the beautiful coconut covering they've mm. dusted this uh, the chocolate with for maybe picking off some of the chocolates. Okay, if that's your vibe. But for me, you want to hear the snap and the crunch. Mm -hmm. And you also, I love the, the, the strawberry hints coming through. Mm. It's just a little bit of a strawberry kick. Absolutely delicious. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like I, um, yeah, I have a feeling next week as we build towards the Easter weekend, we're probably going to have competitions almost daily to see how many of these we can eat. So brace yourself, get ready for it. You're going to hear a lot of the sound of us eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, now, oh, man, this is good. Mm. Do you have any guesses what the new flavor will be? Will you stand a chance to win one of six of these incredible... In fact, this is the new flavor. It is, it is so, good. so delicious. And you stand a chance to win one of six clicks vouchers valued at 1,500 Rand each. Now, simply Ooh. reply to the competition post that's on Expresso's Facebook, X or Instagram pages and submit your guess of what the new beacon mellow flavors could be. Oh man, push the boat out, have mm. a little bit of fun with this. Absolutely beautiful. So we'll give you a clue, help you along your way. So which pastry is commonly associated with the Easter holiday and has a soft, fluffy texture. Mm. My mind is going crazy right now. Don't forget to hashtag let the hunt begin because that's what Easter is all about. That competition closes on the 27th of March, but you can find all the T's and C's on expressoshow.com. Okay, so now we have to taste these ones. That's a palate cleanser. <laughs> At Easter time, you take a marshmallow as a palate cleanser. Mm. Mm, absolutely. I'm getting hints of cinnamon. What are you getting? I'm getting it's definitely like a cinnamony, spicy. I want to say milk tart because I'm just Ooh. South African and anything that starts going down this... Ooh, this mm. is good. It ain't no palate cleanser, yo. It's a palate igniter. Absolutely delicious. Now, you put me in an impossible situation. Do I go with the egg? Do I go with... I'm going with the mushroom. Go with the mushroom. I'm going to go, go with both. With <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay, when we get back, while Graham finishes off, we have to figure out the best way for you to get that perfect foundation color. So we are going to do a little bit of a foundation match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is important. And maybe you're doing your makeup right now. We'll guide you through that. And we are, of course, we're going to be continuing our the importance around sleep yes but some ways that you can enhance your own sleep journey it is all about getting a good night's rest which you need ahead of the weekend and we're gonna have a whole lot of fun in between talk a little bit of sport and a whole lot more we'll see you now
It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel good breakfast show. It's Espresso on S3. And we want to make sure that when it comes to your foundation, you wear the best possible one. And Bobby Brown once said, I believe all women are pretty without makeup, but the right makeup can be pretty powerful. I love this quote because it truly resonates with me. And I believe that the goal of foundation or any other makeup product, it should be to enhance our natural beauty. And that's why it's so important to choose product that suits your personal needs and that will also make you feel confident and comfortable in your own skin. Now here to help us guide us through this entire process of finding the correct foundation is Aisha Samsudin from Woolworths. Aisha, it's so lovely that you're here. Hi. I love your outfit today, firstly. <laughs> Thank you. But today is also about finding the right foundation shade. I know a lot of ladies, in fact, 70% of women, they wear the wrong foundation shade. So perhaps you can help me find, or at least help other ladies, what is the best way for you to try out to find the best foundation? Well, firstly, Zoe, um, with the foundation checking, we need to obviously allow our customers to try on our, their foundations along the jawline so that you can see which one f basically blends into the jawline easily. Okay. Because obviously you do not want to look like you have a mask on your face. True, mm -hmm. because I've seen so many people, especially if this foundation is too white or too orange, yeah. they, they have marks, they have solid little marks. So what we've done is we've removed some of my makeup here on my jawline mm -hmm. and you're going to help me test it out. So as you can see, how much do we, you know, how much of the formula is important in terms of your skin type when you're looking at the various types of foundations that's involved. So with the different types of foundations and different types of skin types, you obviously need to know the import, obviously you need to know what skin type you are. Okay. And then with that being said, then you'll get the correct foundation formula. So we have different types of foundations for different types of skin types as well. Okay, so there really mm. is something for everyone. And what factors do we need to keep in mind when we choose a foundation? I know that each store has different light. I know when you're outside, mm. the light is different. So what are some of those factors you need to keep in mind? So in the factors that you need to keep in mind is obviously you need to ensure that your skin is, you need to know what's the skin type that you have. Yeah. Because with that being said, you'll get the correct foundation match for you. So if you have oily skin, you necessarily wouldn't have a hydrating um, foundation. True. Mm. And that hydrating foundation is obviously then perfect for someone with a dry skin. That's good. Now I'm someone with a combination skin and we've got some of W Beauty's products here. Let's talk about the various foundations that Woolworths have on offer. So currently we have a wide variety of foundations um, with different type of brands. So we have from um, the likes of your W Beauty all the way up to our Chanel foundations as well. Okay, okay. So if I'm going to actually get up and have a look at this one. So here we have the Longwear Max Cover Foundation. Yes. And I love that this has an SPF built in. Yes. And then over here we have got the Time Defying Serum Foundation also with an SPF, SPF built in. What is the difference between the two of these? So with the Longwear Max Foundation, that one is more of a medium to heavy, uh, more of a full coverage foundation. Um, this one is for all skin types, whereas the Times You Find Serum Foundation, that is more of a hydrating foundation. And that one is for, has also a, um, basically an anti-aging factor inside of it. Okay, so you see, they are, or, now I understand why 70% of ladies wear the wrong foundation, because we have so many options to choose from. So what, which one are we going to use to try figure out what my perfect colour is? So seeing that you said you have a combination skin, we're going to do our W Beauty Longwear Max Foundation because it's for all skin types. Okay, okay. So Aisha, I'm going to ask you to take me through the demonstration. If I go yeah. to the store, we're going to test on the jawline. How do I now make sure I get, because obviously do, how much of the sampling do I need to do on my skin to, in order to figure out whether I have the right foundation or not? So you would generally take three of the closest shade to your natural skin, then you will apply it on the jawline and then you will blend it in, then we'll pick the correct shade. Okay, so we've got those three colors right here. We have got almond, tan, as well as 
cream creme brulee. Yeah, okay. I mean, I said cream. <laughs> so I would need you to help me do this little demonstration. Sure. So with this being said, we will take our foundation brush. Okay. okay. Just get Which that. one would you? There are so many foundation brushes. Is there a preference? So it depends on the application that you want. Okay. So we have this foundation brush will generally give you more of a buildable coverage. Where if you have a foundation brush that is more of a wider brush, that will give you more of a lighter coverage. And then obviously your beauty blender will also give you more of a medium coverage. And then once we have these, this is also just to buff and That's smooth and right. give you that beautiful finish. That's so great. what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break from mm. this while we apply and show the very various colors on my skin. So Aisha is going to get busy with that. But Graham, what else is coming up on the show? Well, it's a crazy world out there, Zoe, and we have just hit seven o'clock. So before we march on, let's delve into some of our local and international headlines. We're going to start here in South Africa with an international connect connection and a major internet outage has affected users here in South Africa, leaving them frustrated. Apparently, this has been caused by submarine cables on the West Coast that have been damaged. So internet services were also reportedly disrupted in other parts of Africa, the Middle East, the East and parts of Europe. So Neuromers online programs and applications including Microsoft's Outlook and Teams, LinkedIn and WhatsApp and of course the social media network X all among the services currently being affected and it's unknown whether repairs to the cables near Abidjan and the Ivory Coast will be completed but clearly affecting a lot of people. It's a global village now. Now let's bring it back home for some fantastic news. South Africa's manufacturing sector showed significant improvement in January compared to January of 2023. So data from Stats SA shows the manufacturing production increased by 2.6%. That's the largest positive contributions coming from the petroleum, wood, textiles and glass sectors. And seasonally adjusted manufacturing production increased by 0.2% in the three months ended January compared to the previous three months, which is brilliant. And then seven of the 10 manufacturing divisions reported positive growth rates over this period as well. Well done, South Africa. We are working. Now let's head a little further afield. Israel's military has said it plans to move displaced Palestinians in Gaza to what it has dubbed human humanitarian islands in the middle of the Strip. That's ahead of any offensive in Rafa. Now some 1.4 million people are currently sheltering in the southern city. That's after fleeing the fighting between Israeli troops and Hamas in the northern and central areas. And it's not clear how the islands will operate, but the military suggested that aid and temporary housing would be provided. The UN and US have warned that a full-scale assault on Rafa could be disastrous. Now, a representative of the Kuriga community in Nigeria, where some 300 primary school children were kidnapped last week, says it is impossible for them to collect the ransom because the families of the children are poor. Now, the kidnappers demanded hundreds of thousands of dollars this week. And the Kuriga residents say most families cannot even afford three meals a day and will not be able to raise the large amount. It's understood the gang said they kidnapped the children because some of their members and their livestock had died in military airstrikes. Now, a recent study indicates that giant redwood trees in the United Kingdom are proving to be strong contenders compared to their iconic counterparts in the U.S., some of the most iconic, in fact. Now, introduced roughly 160 years ago by the wealthy elite, their growth rate is very much comparable to those in the U.S., and they do grow. And in numbers, they even outperform the Americans in some spaces. So while California boasts some 80,000 of these incredible trees, the U.K. hosts no less than 500 so in California, they reach heights of 90 meters. That is incredible. While in the UK, the tallest presently standing at 55 meters. That's due to their relative youth in their perspective. And with a potential lifespan exceeding 2,000 years, there's um, ample time for the UK's redwoods to flourish and even outgrow their US brethren. Time will tell. We won't be around to find out. Well, we were around for some incredible footballing action. We round up our news and delve into some of those sporting highlights now.
Let's start with some European football. And boy, are they not giving Jurgen Klopp the send-off he deserves. Liverpool delivered a stunning display, netting four goals in just 14 minutes during a dominant 6-1 victory over Sparta Prague in the Europa League tie last night, securing their spots in the quarterfinal. So despite already leading 5-1 from the first leg, Jurgen Klopp fielded a very strong lineup, and he reaped the rewards as they marched towards a potential quadruple. What a way to end his tenure. Now let's let the accolades continue as we turn to rugby and this one will warm your heart. Springbok lock Irman Etzebeth achieved a rare feat by clinching SA Rugby's Player of the Year award for the second consecutive year at the prestigious SA Rugby Awards. Joining him in the double triumph was rising star who's still rising, Kanan Moody. He's been a phenomenal discovery. He secured the Young Player of the Year award for the second time as well. And then talk about putting your hand up. She had the best year possible, Libby Janssen van Rensburg. She shone in the women's categories, earning recognition as both Springbok Woman and Provincial Player of the Year for her truly outstanding contributions. In 2023, you need to watch this girl. She is is amazing and well done, Eben. Now we stay with rugby for more good news from a South African perspective as the Sharks have announced the return of Springbok centre Andre Esterhazen to Kings Park. That, of course, from the Carlequins as of next season. So his return to South Africa motivated by family reason, uh, reasons and that led to an early release from his contract with the Harlequins, which was set to expire only in 2025. Esterhazen's prolific performances at Harlequins, including a pivotal role in their Premiership title win in 2020, 21 season certainly made an impact on his role within the Springboks and they highlight his valuable contribution during his time in London and how valuable he is going to be when he's back on local soil. And then we round off with tennis and Yannick Sinner is on fire at the moment. The reigning Australian Open champion continued his remarkable form by storming into the semi-finals of the ATP WTA Indian Wells Masters with a commanding 6-3, 6-3 victory over Czech Yeri Leheka and Sinner extended his unbeaten streak now to to an impressive 19 and 0. So this remarkable run includes a flawless 16 and 0 record in 2024, stretching back to last year's Davis Cup finals. But he does have a stiff challenge in the form of Carlos Alcaraz next up. And of course, he secured his spot in the semis by defeating Alexander Zverev and making it look easy 6 3 6 1 in their quarterfinal berth as well. And that's where we leave our sport for now. The roads should be waking up. Let's make sure we can get you to work safely and then we'll delve into the weather. Well, let's start off with traffic in Midrand, Johannesburg. There's some congestion on the N1 southbound between Shell Ultra City, Midrand and Uli Fontaine Road. Traffic is slow moving. Please maintain a safe following distance. If you're in Germiston, Johannesburg, there's a stationary vehicle on the N3 southbound. It's after the Galulis interchange. The two left lanes are affected with the back of queue at the Electron interchange allow for additional travel time. That's your traffic. Let's take another look at your weather. And we have some environmental news this morning is that the KwaZulu-Natal MEC for Environmental Affairs, Siboniso Duma, has announced the employment of 14,714 young individuals as part of the Greening Revolution. Guided by the Council on Climate Change Agenda, the Provincial Department of Environmental Affairs is initiating projects to safeguard the environment. Extreme weather patterns, including droughts, heat waves, storms and floods, have affected municipalities in the past five years. The department recognizes the impact on society and the economy, thus prioritizing environmental protection and climate change mitigation. The newly employed youth will act as foot soldiers in these efforts, focusing on environmental protection, climate change, mitigation, waste management and combating invasive plants. The initiative aims to make to make Quizland Sal greener, cleaner, sustainable and prosperous. Well, it's that time of the morning for us to take a look at your sunrise view. And Danny from North Beach in Durban is our first sunrise view for today. I love that. And of course, bringing back such great memories of the North Beach Durban. If you would love to share your view, do so on our WhatsApp line. Our number is 063-408-8863. Let's take a look at your temperatures for your Friday.
are just finishing up my perfect foundation shade. Aisha is still with us and we've applied three different shades to my jawline because ladies, 70% of us are wearing the wrong shade of foundation and Aisha is here to show us how to find that perfect shade. So currently on my skin, I have tan, creme brulee as well as almond and Aisha, you said that tan, which is this color closest to my ear is my perfect shade. Can you just elaborate why these two are the incorrect shades for my skin tone? So because I said that the tan is the correct shade, you can see with the almond, it's slightly lighter and the creme brulee has more of a darker pinker undertone. Okay, okay. So this would now just need it to be blended into my skin and I am definitely a shade tan. Well, Aisha, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for showing us how to find the perfect foundation. And you can head to your nearest Woolworths store to get your foundation matched and shop all of your foundation coverage needs at Woolworths Beauty. They are available in store, online, as well as on the Woolies app. Plus, you stand a chance to win one of five 2,000 Rand Woolies vouchers. All you have to do is reply to the competition post that's on Expresso's Facebook or X pages with a photo of you holding your favorite W Beauty foundation and tell us your perfect shade or tag us and at Woolies Beauty in your photo on Instagram. Remember to include hashtag Woolies Beauty in your competition post and that competition will close on Sunday the 31st of March 2024. T's and C's can be found on our website expressoshow.com. So Aisha, now that we know my perfect shade, I think we're ready to blend. Sure thing. Thank you. Oh, we are taking a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're feeling a little sleepy, don't worry because it is in fact World Sleep Day. We are celebrating with Restonic today because that's their business. Famous for their patented marvelous middle. If you felt it, you will know what I mean. They aim to enable success and well-being through the power of sleep. We've already reinforced how vitally important a good night's sleep is. A good bed, though, is an investment in that quality of sleep and your life, your future well-being. And he had a chat about the significance of World Sleep Day and the work that they do, the incredible mark that they have made. It's marketing executive Dale Harley. Dale, thank you so much for the early morning. Are, morning, are you, Graham. Are you a late night guy or an early morning guy? <laughs> I'm an early morning guy. Yay, thank you. That's why you're here this morning. The rest of the team are quietly in slumber at home. Um, thank you so much for being here and representing what you do within a very commercially driven space that now seems to be completely customer focused. And it's with such vital importance, a good night's sleep. Restonic come at this from a very powerful angle and you've got the history, you've got the backing, the proven success rate. Tell us a little bit about how you guys have been able to make this mark. Restonic is a well-established brand. We've uh, been around since 1938. And for, for us, our purpose is to enable success and well-being through the power of sleep. And um, I actually have the most rewarding 
job in the world. I get to make and promote beds for a living and it's rewarding because I know how important oh, a bed sure. is to help people achieve their daily goals in life. Um, I, I was joking earlier with the doctor we were chatting to. It's, it's like the ultimate hack. It's, the, it's, it's a kind of biohack that's there for us every day. And maybe that's why we don't put enough importance or relevance on a good night's sleep. But here comes World Sleep Day. It obviously is a massively important day for you because everyone is focused on this. How do you guys make the most out of World Sleep Day? Why is this such an important day for you? It's a special day for Restonic because we... We, it aligns to our purpose, which is to enable success and well-being through the power of sleep. And for us, our tagline is believe in the power of sleep. So this is not something that, that we drive just on World Sleep Day. It's something that we do on, a, it's your on purpose, an ongoing yeah. basis. And for us, it's a day to um, embrace power of sleep, educate people about the power of sleep and promote power of sleep. So we, on a huge journey to drive power of sleep and we want everyone out there to understand how important sleep is to improve their lives. Sleep is your superpower. It really it's is. the yeah. most important pillar of health and wellness. And health and wellness is one of the strong pillars of the Restonic brand and we want everyone to realize how important sleep is to improve their lives to achieve their daily goals and dreams in life. Uh, and it is. I mean, it comes to bear in this job. A good night's sleep, you're 10, 15 percent better than you were the day before. The bottom line is it feeds into your immunity, the health of your brain, the long term health of your brain um, and, and the way that you think, the memories that you make, um, the physical well-being. It ticks literally every single box. And I love the fact that normally we work from marketing back to the product with these sorts of things. You guys are working completely the other way around from purpose, which is amazing. I love the fact that you have taken it to the point of the Restonic Essentia Sleep Clinic. And I suppose with great power comes great responsibility. Because you know this, you've got to share it with people. So the, the Restonic Essentia Sleep Clinic is an industry first for a bedding manufacturer in South Africa. We, one of the, the few bedding manufacturers around the world that have a sleep clinic. So it's a partnership which we launched Brilliant. towards the end of last year. So Restonic Essentia focuses on clinical care, um, training and research, and it helps Restonic to engage with sleep deprived individuals to help them get the professional help they need to improve their lives through better sleep. Um, and it's the bottom line. If, if you've got the right conditions, you've got the right bed, you will sleep better. Doing the deep dive that you guys have, I'm sure you have found out a lot of gems, hopefully, that have improved your own sleep rhythm and, and pattern. Why, in your mind, through all of the, the, the major findings that you've had and those aha moments, from your perspective, why is sleep so important? How does it lead to us having that power um, and the, the, the ability to be able to, to be at our best? Sleep is the most important pillar of health and wellness. It's, you, you can't survive without sleep. You really can't, yeah. And, and everyone in today's world lives very busy lives. They, I mean, we get most of our population take a few taxis to work, get to work really early, work a long day, get home at night and then they, they, they're in this hustle every single day and you need to get quality sleep, you need to invest in the best bed you can afford and that bed recharges your body to perform at your best. And it's amazing, we'll, we'll invest in a big TV, we'll invest in other appliances but we don't invest in that one thing that could make all, literally all of the difference in our lives. So you're helping us do that. For the month of March you guys are running some amazing promotions courtesy of World Sleep Day so we all get to benefit. Fill us in there. So if you want to get um, a good deal on a quality Rasonic bed, get to Sleep Master stores. They have a Restonic Bazaruto queen size bed, which you could save a thousand rand wow. and get it for five triple nine. That's uh, already a very good price. Valid till end of March. Wow, maybe we should have started with that one, but um, I have tested out many of your beds and I've actually fallen asleep in a showroom during an insert while getting a shot, but so I, I, I understand the power of a good night's sleep. 
all the lack thereof and how devastating those effects can be. But seeing how far you guys go to look after us is amazing. So thank you so much, my friend. Um, we haven't established if a nap is a good thing or a bad thing, but you're welcome to go and take your nap this morning. You've earned that right. Uh, we want you to celebrate World Sleep Day in style, whether it's a nap or spoiling yourself with a good night's sleep on a brand new bed. So go and check out Restonics unbelievable retail deals for the month of March. We've given you one that is an absolute cracker and their exciting competition at, as well. It closes today, so get entering. If you want that good night's sleep, it is literally right at your fingertips. Go and get it. Celebrate World Sleep Day with Restonic this 15th of March on Expresso with a chance to win one of 10 Restonic Bazaruto queen size beds, each valued at 5,999 Rand. Retailing at this price until the end of March. So to enter, WhatsApp the keyword Expresso to 11 298 and tell us Restonic believes in the power of sleep. True or false? Competition closes on March the 15th. T's and C's apply. Oh, well, as we continue to talk about sleep, have you noticed both our guests that spoke about sleep was named Dale? Dale. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, insomnia, it is a common sleep disorder that can really make it's it tough. hard oh. to fall asleep and also to stay asleep. But it can also cause you to wake up too early and not be able to get back to sleep. Now, you may still feel tired when you wake up and insomnia can really drain your energy levels and affect your mood. So today, we thought, why don't we check online to see what is trending when it comes to those home readies to make you get ready for sleep. So, Graham, are you ready to take some notes? I love this. <laughs> I absolutely love this because two people very close to me are affected by insomnia and it is nasty. It's hectic. So we're going to go through our first and we're seeing some bananas. Having trouble sleeping? Here's my natural home remedy that can help you. You're going to need two bananas and some cinnamon. Now boil the bananas. Strain, add some cinnamon for taste and drink when needed. All right. <laughs> it's one of those that's so obvious that maybe, you know, we need a bit of time to try it. But try it and see. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Let's take a look at the next one. Make your own sleep aid spray. Make your own sleep aid spray to fall asleep faster. Take an empty bottle, put in some water and mix with some rubbing alcohol and drop a few lavender scents and oil. And spray it into your pillows in the bed before you sleep. The scent of lavender relaxes the mind and body, reduces anxiety and stress and improves sleeping quality. <laughs> They were talking so fast, I'm energized. I know, I'm like, now I'm like buzzing. I just want to run out of studio and start my day. I love that. But lavender is amazing from a, just a relaxation, muscle relaxation. Absolutely love that Did one. Did you mix it with alcohol? <laughs> you think that's the combination? Just to keep it clean, man. Keep the bed bugs out. Okay. I love that. Now, we know that the way that we breathe has a massive impact. In fact, part of our stress center is regulated by our breathing. So I would imagine that breathing does play a big part. Let's take a look at this one. If you're somebody who cannot fall asleep quickly, I have a hack that is going to change your life. I told two of my friends about it, they tried it, and they said they fell asleep literally instantly. It's a certain breathing technique that I learned from Joe Dispenza, and then I kind of just tried it before I went to bed, and it worked so well. So it's basically taking five deep breaths, but these deep breaths are like very specifically done. Look up pineal gland meditation on Spotify or YouTube and Joe Dispenza. You basically take a super slow inhale through your nose, and you start like clenching your body. So like you flex like your abs and your stomach all the way up to your chest and you like literally feel the breath go up your spine up until I imagine it in the middle of my head. And then you hold it there for like as long as you can and then you let it go and you do that five times. For example, let's see if I can do this. Oh, I don't want to make myself it, too, still, too sleepy otherwise I'm, I'm not going to make it through the rest of the show. Fall asleep immediately. Oh, okay, well, I don't want... Description of where you have to clinch everyone. I know, man. It's a pretty... It's a point I'm going to fall off the chair. Well, like, I'm not going to try... It. I'm not going to go do full on, like, all in for that now and not make it through the rest of the day. But... Oh. But, but G-Man, so it. you've tried the breathing. Okay. How about we try a bit of wrist massaging? Let's take Ooh, a look at okay. this one. I used a hack to get myself to sleep, which I've never done before. But let me show you. There is a pressure point that I take about three fingers and I go down from the base of my palm and I feel around and there are two tendons there. And so I feel for the valley in between and I just put my thumb there. I pulsate, so I press up and down for about 10 to 15 seconds and then I hold. You know what, I'll just do it.
music helps. <laughs> I'll say. If I just like fall asleep while I'm sitting here, please just nudge me and kick me. Quite interesting. Listen, our, our baseline is always tired, so it's difficult to know whether we're getting more tired or more sleepy than we, we always are. I think we need to bump our baseline up. Uh, the bottom line is there is a hack that will work for you. It's about, I think, the exercise of being intentional about falling asleep. You know, being able to get yourself to that point of being able to get a good night's sleep is a manifestation of a healthy lifestyle. You can't get one without the other. Mm. Mm, well, listen, the conversation, it doesn't have to end here. You're always welcome to head on over to our social media pages and let us know what home ready remedy do you use for better sleep is it perhaps a massage perhaps there's a certain tea you like share those hacks with us we would no love night caps, to know eh? no nightcaps but some 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 family friendly home <laughs> remedies zanele do you have any tricks to getting your beauty sleep Oh my Zoe, so many, so many in fact. However, I know as well that we got such exciting things that are coming up on the show still. And this is why I gotta let you in on it. First and foremost, FA Cup quarterfinals, baby, they're about to be in the building. And there's a whole lot of excitement around them. And this is why we need to stay tuned because we're gonna be hearing everything we need to know. But then, hey, you see that dance challenge, the one that Jason Derulo's doing, Kai Sinat, all of them. Oh, chala, bam. We got EQ in the house and he's gonna be doing the things in terms of a performance and this is why you got to make sure you do not go anywhere Feel Good Breakfast Show family because it's only going up from here as we go into the weekend. Stick around. Are you auditioning and getting ready for Tropica Island of Treasure? Well, don't let joint and muscular pain hold you back. Deep Eat is your go-to warm-up solution and SA's number one choice. Oh, yes, and here's an extra incentive. The top seven contestants heading to the island will each receive 10,000 Rand from Deep Eat. And remember, you can upload your audition with the hashtag Deep Eat and the hashtag Tropica and tag MyTropica. Who knows, you could be competing in Zanzibar. Yeah, it's time to reach your full potential. Get Deep Eat and conquer the island. It's my feel-good show. Welcome back as we talk a little sports and we are being treated to a rich vein at the moment as the oldest football tournament enters its crucial phase. It's time for the FA Cup quarterfinals. This is probably the best, excuse the way for fans out there, but I reckon this is probably the best football competition there is. This weekend, eight teams will battle it out for a chance to grace Wembley Stadium. And joining us today is football journalist Kurt Buckerfield, who is, I, I would imagine, as excited about this weekend as anybody because it's your job to watch the footy, Absolutely. my friend. Yeah. 
Uh, I love it. And I love it when you get this kind of mix up because you want the big guns represented. Yes. You want a bit of the league drama to spill over, which we get. And you want a couple of those giant slayers to put their hands up. So let's start with Wolves, who have been a bit hot and cold this season. Yeah. A lot of potential there, but they often don't spend the kind of money that they need to, to be able to compete at the top. Let's be honest. Um, but they're up against uh, Coventry City. Let's talk about Coventry City. What do we know about this team? How have they made it to this, this level of the competition? Normally by now, we would have weeded them out. So a few lucky draws, um, teams in the, the lower tiers of English football, but they score a lot of goals. Uh -huh. 16 goals in the competition this season so far, which is the most. They're the best, the highest scoring team. Wow. Um, I think it's four more than Manchester City. So they can score. They've some earned the goals, right. But yeah. they've had some very nice draws. They did get through, I think, the previous round with a replay. Um, so, yeah, we don't know too much about them, but they score a lot of goals. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they have a chance against Wolves this weekend, especially away from home at the Mullineux, but... Um, and it, it feels it, like it Wolves could... have been finding their rhythm. Exactly, yeah. and I do think that they've been impressive since Gary O'Neill's appointment last year. I do think that they've done well. Of course, there's inconsistency, but that's always going to be the case with a club like Wolves. So. Yeah, I, I do think they're their favourites going. Uh, and this is where, as a manager of, of Coventry or the ownership, you, you it's, it's a bittersweet moment because you know half your team is going to be gone <laughs> in the next transfer window, but it's how you make your bank. It's how you do it. And um, when we talk about a team that hits its straps at just the right time, Manchester City, as much as we are talking about Arsenal and we're talking about Liverpool, in our heart of hearts, I think we're all thinking about Man yes. City and where they are in their journey. They're up against a, a somewhat embattled Newcastle. Yes. Eddie Howe did amazing things with uh, the Magpies last year. A little bit off the boil. Ten losses, I think, this, this year or something along yeah. those lines in their last run. Is this going to be a walk in the park for Pep or are Newcastle going to find their fire, their form at the right time? I don't think so, Graham. I think it's going to be <laughs> relatively routine for City. Newcastle have lost their last nine games really? in, the Etihad sure. Stadium, um, in a row. So I don't think Newcastle have um, too much of a chance this weekend. And then City's professionalism, they take this, this competition seriously. They don't always go on to win it when they progress past this stage, but they are super professional. They're not going to play a B team. Well, no, I don't think they have a B team. No, they don't have a B team, yeah. <laughs> and even if they do, every youngster that they produce these days is the highest level. So I, I do think that City um, probably walk away. Yeah, I think the system trumps system at this stage. But uh, for you know, all due respect, Newcastle are on an incredible arc. So Absolutely. they're there. They're in the, yeah. at this stage of the FA Cup. We love it. This one's a bit spicy for me because Chelsea and Leicester haven't had great seasons. There's no. been a lot of drama on and off the field. I think for Maurizio Pochettino, there were such high hopes that this match with this squad he's a, a player's coach yes. he's, he's able to get the fans to buy in it hasn't clicked for him how yeah. do you see this one playing out could this be his moment I think this might be a difficult one to call because you know this this Leicester team aren't very different from the one that got relegated last and year. United Liverpool yeah I mean potentially Jurgen Klopp could be going after the quadruple in his context yes. for where yes. he is now I know it's not Champions League but yeah. it's close enough um, Man United <sighs> It's difficult to wrap your head around this Man United <laughs> team. For the last half a decade, we haven't quite known who Man United exactly. are. Yeah. If you think of what they represent, the football, how this comes together, but they can put together some amazing performances. Exactly. You see that happening against this Liverpool side with this momentum chasing the dream that they're chasing this year? It, it could very well happen. United could turn up on the day. And that's the problem with, with Manchester United right now. You never know which yeah. side you're going to get, what kind of a performance you're going to get. So I think they could sh turn up there at Old Trafford. The, the onus will be on them to take the game to Liverpool. But that's where it can be so dangerous for them. Because if they do try and take the game forward and play high up the pitch, They'll There's going to be space in behind yeah. Casemiro and in between midfield and defence, and that's where Liverpool exploit space better than anyone in the world. So I do think that it would be very dangerous for them to play an open brand, an attacking brand of football. Um, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect them to be conservative at Old Trafford. Yeah. And I don't they think kind they of can damned be. if they do, damned if they don't. Exactly. Yeah. And, and these United players know that a win against their rivals, against Liverpool, will go a long way in getting fans back on side. But um, that can also be very, very dangerous. Yeah, because they're exposed. Exactly. They're exposed and, and that's, vulnerable. That's yeah. the battle. The battle of midfield will be the most important and the most key in this match. Um, but Manchester United in midfield right now don't look very strong. And they Liverpool... Just... 
Well, it's Definitely just it's the personnel. They, the players are on the board, but just not in the right position. Absolutely. Um, so basically what you're saying is Man City are going to go all the way to win this entire competition. I think so. I, think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the vibe, but he has, as, a, as a neutral in this case, I think we're going to be served up a brilliant FA Cup round as I think the real magic of what the Premier League is all about, the, the history and the culture there and the opportunity in cup competitions like this massive. But I have a feeling Liverpool are going to shine this weekend. If you thought the players were motivated to play for Klopp before this, as he enters his final tenure now, the final home stretch, I think we're going to see some magic. But Kurt, we love you, Guy. Thank Go you. and do some proper work this weekend. <laughs> Send you. some emails while you're watching the sports. <laughs> um, and hopefully you can revel in all of the action as we go up to Joburg now for another banger performance. It is true, Graham. Indeed, we are here for a banger performance. And you know what the beautiful thing is about music? Is that it brings everyone together, no matter what team you play for. But for me, I know which team I'm playing for when it comes to artists. It is Team EQ, baby. <laughs> EQ, are you still good? I'm good, Mama. How are you? I'm good. Uh, and I'm all the better because I know that you've given us hit after hit after yeah. hit. But now, we're looking forward to a project. Yes. Speak to us about that. Uh, well, I've got a project coming up with Lim Crazy. We've got a joint EP on the way. Woo! Uh, and I've also got my project, and obviously he's got his own project. Yeah. So yeah, I've just got a lot of projects coming. Like, uh, uh, I just so want to drop like more projects. When when can we expect the first one? We're gonna start with the joint EP. Uh -huh. Me and Lim Crazy. So yeah. Uh, okay. I love it. Listen, two young people coming together to bring us magic, and that's also what happened when we talk about the song Chala Mami. Are you ready for us, EQ? I'm easy. Danko, <laughs> Express of family, please put your hands together for the king. It is EQ with Chala Aye, aye, aye. Oh, what's it? What's it? Oh, what's it? Then what's it? EQ. We want no party. Oh, what's it? Hung up for me. I see. Hung up for me. Hung up for me. Why not? I saw. What's it? Hung up for me. Yeah, aye, aye, aye. Hung up for me. Oh, what's it? Hung up for me. What's it? Call me, Lala. Si la serie la visite mola gutachi, mi malo, presa buena voluntad. 
You saw it on Express for the first time, honey. This king can dance. But you got a whole lot to look forward to on your feel-good breakfast show. And of course, it is none other than the fact that the Cape Epic is coming up. We're gearing up for it, and we're going to be doing it together. And then, ha, huh, I'm out of breath. I was dancing. Did you see me dance? No, oh, but we also are going to be getting into what I love, a young recipe. It is potato salad with condensed milk. But then, what are we doing right now? Hmm? We're going to head up to a short break, XA. Stay tuned. <laughs> we're coming back. We're coming back, Baba. Uncle. <laughs> yeah. It's my feel-good breakfast show. It's a big year, a massive year. Welcome back as we delve a little deeper into the potential. 2024 marks the 20th anniversary of the iconic ABSA Cape Epic, the most epic epic out there. And in celebration of this milestone, ABSA is taking the hashtag She Untamed initiative to new heights. Now, the bank has assembled a 20 all woman team as part of Team ABSA, hashtag She Untamed 20 for 20. Now, this commitment will ensure that 50% of the team comprises of women of color, constituting just over a third of the Team ABSA. This is a story that matters. 
all our stories matter. This one connects all of us, and I love it. And here to tell us more about it is Tina Fenter, the executive for marketing operations, who lives this. You live this, and I can feel it from your energy that when you walked in here, how much this means to you. Why? Why is this such a big thing from your own personal perspective? You know, first of all, thank you for the opportunity because stories as well is one of those things, it goes further when you write them together and it yes. epitomizes the Cape epic because you do it in two teams or two. So why this is so important to me is because you need to be the change that you want to see. And as corporate South Africa, and especially as APSA, what I've seen is we've got these flagship properties but what are we doing about them? And this is not, like Rebecca, this is not a hand down, it's a For hand up. Sure. So I really want it. So I have this personal investment just to see how do I drive women forward by just getting them to move. You know, they are the pillar of our existence, of our history, of our legacy. So why not do that? And I hail from a long line of women, strong women. Me too. I think it's my, Me too, man. I think it's, I think it's, my, it's my moral obligation sure. to actually do this, you know. Because you know the difference it makes. Yes. And it really does. I have the most wonderful bird's eye view of, and obviously a big focus for me is in women's sport, but I get to interview executives such as yourself, people that are doing incredible things. Representation matters. It matters more than we, I think, are willing to take on board because of the status quo very often. What made it, motivated you then to take this leap and create this safe space, if you will, in what feels like a very unsafe environment for many women out there to get them moving? There, there must have been an aha moment where you knew, OK, the time is right. Let's do it with this year's ABSA Cape Epic. How did this all come together? So it's more than leap. It's actually trailblazing yeah. where we want to go. Because when we started this out in 2019, then COVID hit. It was an idea. I looked at this sponsor property, which is a monster. And I just looked at the optics and I saw like, there's something missing here. How do you change mindsets? How do you shift that paradigm? And then started doing that. How hard can it be? And I still remember one of our executives, Jeffrey Lee, said to me is, how hard can this be to get women on bikes? And that's where it all started because I like a good challenge. <laughs> like I really do like a Clearly, good challenge. Yeah. And um, we actually set it up and started working and said, okay, let's get, just get a few women on bikes. And 2023 was a phenomenal year for us. We increased the phenomenal participation of women for, by 266%. I had 12 teams. Wow. This year, I've got 20 20, teams. 20 for so, 20. Um, and I'm getting challenged on 25 for 25. And um, let's see how that goes. But I, I think you have to just look at this and go, how do I change this thing? How do I start? Look, it's complicated. I'm going to be the first person to say that. Um, it's not easy because you deal with a whole different psyche. Oh. You deal with a whole different... And it's not just about, um, you know, the, the movement or the cycling or the riding. It's the investment. It's how do you do the nutrition? How do you actually get um, the exercise? We are all busy people, you know? So how do you just put in... This is time. Um, oh, well, it's an investment. Yes. And you would know all about the time versus investment, investment. relationship. Um, that's your business. That's yes. what you do. But you would also be highly aware that you don't just speak to a market of millions. You speak to millions of individuals all working. That's why each individual story matters so much in that respect. Now that we've created this platform um, at the cost, at the amount of effort that you have put into it, where is this going to go? You say you want 25 for 25. That's a great starting point. But this speaks to a much longer term investment. What's the vision? The, the vision is one of, if I just look at where APSA is going, just in terms of positioning and the brand, and it's a beautiful brand, and um, it's how do we write those stories? And it is about, it's no longer about the corporates, it's about the humans. And I'm looking at this um, beautiful gift that I've been given, and it comes with a great responsibility. Oh, sure. So it's how do I start investing, how do I build a sisterhood? of this kind of thing and get people to pay it forward because it's not just about putting 20 teams on bicycles. It's about what are you doing to change the narrative? And I think the big idea is let's, um, let's enjoy it, but then at the same time is let's build academies, let's start investing. Let's, let's create just, the structures let's around Let's just create it. consistency, yeah. create that kind of structures around it and then just sweat assets and sweat our partners and get more people to actually invest in this because it's hard. Somebody needs to start. And I'm glad to report that we started. So my challenge to corporate South Africa is, is 
Let's play. Come join the party. Come, Come join. join the party. Because yes. uh, um, we're talking about mental well-being. We're talking yes. about physical well-being. We're talking about finding our tribe. Yes. We're talking now, in this case, about finding mentors, which is non-existent when we look at Because let's be honest, not everyone's going to be a champion cyclist. But amongst your social network, that strategic network that you're riding with every weekend could be your next business partner, your next business mentor. They could hold the key for you. Um, it also could be the jobs that are attainable when we prop up the industry around it. All of this says to me, and just looking into your eyes, the fire in your eyes right now, you're living your story yes. right now, and you are making it part of your everyday job to tell that story because it matters. Your story matters. How has that come to bear in your own life with the context of what you have been creating here with this amazing project? You know, I, every day I'm humbled and I'm privileged just about the opportunity that has positions. Um, I look into, I have so many people looking up to me and just saying, but like, I'm so grateful. In turn, I am grateful. And this community that we've built is how it has driven me. It's just, you want to do better. You want to start saying, little girl, there is opportunity here. It's not just about being a cyclist. It's also about, you know, how, how do you become a bike mechanic? Oh, how do you move oh. into the media and production space? This is why this opportunity is... How do you become a bike manufacturer? I want to do all of those things, you know, and, and that's... I just want to give people hope because in a world where we sometimes get so overwhelmed by, you know, complexity and just the... the we live in a beautiful country and there's so much opportunity. And if each one of us as women or girls or sisters just stand up and go, I've got you, I can be your mentor. I, ca I can't tell you how to ride a bike, but I can tell you how to eat, or I can tell you how to, where to show up, or I can tell you how to, to, to act across social media, For or sure. how to actually just move forward. Where's just the plug-in? Where's talk. the best bike? Yeah, just, where's the community? Just show up. That's all I'm asking. Uh, well, you are showing up in a Thank big you. way. 20 for 20. I love that. Um, good luck. Embrace what's going on. I feel a baseline shift coming on here. And we say we are a manifestation, an average of everyone we spend our time developing with. You are forcing that baseline up with something like this. I cannot wait to see where this is going to go. Thank you so, so much. There is uh, the bottom line here that it is an event that is one of the greatest tests of the human spirit. And in my mind, some of the best representatives of that are the incredible woman that we get to plug into on this show. And this certainly speaks to that. The Absa Cape Epic, Africa's untamed mountain biking race, the premier mountain bike stage race in the world. There is no comparison. And the 20th edition of the Absa Cape Epic will be taking place from the 17th to the 24th of March. It's right around the corner. I hope you're ready. And of course, it's here in the beautiful Western Cape where you can literally every backdrop is breathtaking. But if you find out or want to find out more, you can head over to Epic dash series.com and we'll keep those details up on our social media platforms and if you're a female cyclist or working within that cycling industry reach out and start pulling up with you thank you so much you know you're an absolute superstar thank you Thanks, G-Man. Well, we're about to show you something epic in the kitchen. If you loved growing up eating the family potato salad at the braai, it is probably because there was one ingredient you love, and it was that secret ingredient. It was the clover condensed milk. Yes, you heard that correct. The condensed milk's sweet flavor, it complements the naturally salty dish, and it creates an addictive taste that keeps you begging for another bite. Now, this is a South African rite of passage, and we we are showing you how to make your own version with some caramelized onion. We're going to add some feta and picante peppers. So G-Man, you are joining me here for this recipe. So we're going to start off by just balancing out our clover condensed milk what? because we have got a little bit of mayonnaise in our bowl. And if you don't mind, you can add only half the tin of our sweetened condensed milk. So what are we going to do with the other half? I wonder. Uh, we'll enjoy that for dessert. So I just, think we'll, <laughs> just half. We'll find a way. I, I actually half. thought you were joking earlier when you spoke about the fact that we are putting condensed milk with mashed potatoes. It's so crazy. You, we, we're going to balance it out. Now, this clover sweetened condensed milk, it obviously adds a delicious sweetness delicious. to the dressing, but it also adds an insane creaminess that sure. can only be found in a, tan, a can of condensed milk. So we've got that beautiful flavor there. We're going to add a little bit of lemon juice and some Dijon mustard. Okay, for balance, a bit of a bit of bite, a bit of tartness. I love yes. that. I'm thinking for like a toasted chicken mayonnaise. Yes. Can you imagine? Ooh oh and you, <laughs> you know when you eat potato salad when you just add it with mayo 
you always wonder, something's missing from yeah, this potato salad. It needs funkiness. This is the secret it ingredient. It needs a little bit of funk. Okay. Yeah. We're adding some Dijon mustard. Of course, what we've done is we've previously peeled our potatoes. We've boiled them. They have cooled down for our potato salad. Graham is busy making the dressing for our potato salad. We're going to season with some salt and pepper. Oh, I'm going to get it. that in there for you. And this is a, a big thing for me, is a potato salad rests on how well the potatoes are cooked. Yes. Um, so you, you absolutely need them to be soft. I'm sorry, not, I mean, not mushy, but um, I, there's nothing worse than having like too much um, kind of backbone there. In yes. Your, there go. So I'm looking at the tin. You only threw in about a third. I'm sorry, man. I didn't want to over... Overplay my hand. There we, okay, there, there we go. There we go. There we go. It's also going to <laughs> change the texture of our mayonnaise a mm. little bit, make it a little bit easier to spread. A bit spread. more creamy. Yes, yeah. and that's oh, what we want. That's amazing. We're going to add our picante peppers, also known as pepper dues. Pepper dues. <laughs> it is a South African thing. Please don't sue us. <laughs> and we're going to add some caramelized oh. onions to this dressing. Oh, and, and I've heard the, the uh, pepper dew mayo, if you even just blend those together, makes the most incredible flavour profile. It definitely so does. So we've got everything. We've got tart, we've um, got the acidity, we've got the sweetness, we've got a little bit of bite there, just to ramp it up. Balance, balance, balance. Balance, balance, balance. We've also got some spring onion that I've chopped up that we're going to add. And then very last, we're going to add our potatoes. Of course, you don't want to break the potatoes, so we'll sure. just have to be very gentle. I'm add, adding our spring onion. Just be gentle when you fold in the potatoes. Okay. We will handle with care. Handle with care. We'll finish off with a bit of garnish. And then to finish off... pop them in? Go yeah. for it. Now Just make sure it's beautifully thing. coated. I have a feeling we have more sauce than potatoes. But Ain't that's nothing okay. wrong. Nothing I'm sure wrong. as we speak, Tiff and our amazing kitchen team are busy whipping up more yes. potatoes for the rest of this crew. And we're just going to Ooh. finish off with some of our Clover Elite Feta. Oh, we're going to finish it about off. This the coating, it really does give it a coating. It does give Look it a coating. That. So you can serve that in a beautiful bowl like this. That's we've finished stunning. it off with some garnish, some chopped parsley and... And, and you want those those little mini moments when, you, when you're entertaining, especially for someone to go, oh, what, oh, what is that? Yes. Oh, what are you putting? And then you can say, ah, ha, ha, ha. That's the secret ingredient. That's secret. And, we just and then we use the rest of the condensed milk for your dessert. They'll be like, oh, this condensed milk is so lovely. And you can wink at them. You and also if you finish, you know, some people finish off with a nightcap, a little bit of coffee, maybe a tea with some condensed milk in it. That's how my grandparents <laughs> used to enjoy it. <laughs> nice, sweet tea. Exactly. And then oh. you can dunk a biscuit. You can dunk your rusk in the condensed milk and then dunk it in the tea. It's, 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 it's going to be amazing. Oh, now you can cool. keep this condensed milk potato salad recipe on standby for your next braai. And blow everyone away with this upcoming Easter braai weekend that's coming up. But just make sure that you make a big enough batch for everyone to have seconds. Now, if you want to get your hands on this full recipe, you can visit it at expressoshow.com. Add a spoonful of love to all your favorite things and sweeten it your way with Clover's sweetened condensed milk. All right, we're talking Absa Cape Epic. Hanali Stain is going to be joining us in studio just a moment to fill us in. It is, without a doubt, the most epic bike race challenge, life challenge you could take on. We're going to do a deep dive in just a moment. Oh, and we need to do something epic in the kitchen. We're going to whip up something delicious, something sweet, something crunchy. Ooh. So do not miss out on that delicious recipe. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> We're in Zanzibar for Tropical Island of Treasure. Are you? Did you just swim here from South Africa? There's an easier way to find fame and your share of a smooth million rand fortune. Simply upload your audition to social media, explain why you're a match for our celebs. Add the hashtag Tropica and tag at my Tropica and we can see you in Zanzibar. Buy a Tropica now and enter to be on the island.
Two hours done and dusted. It is officially a quarter to the weekend, baby. One hour left of the show to savor with you. And we're going to kick start it now with those news and sporting headlines. Then the fun can commence. Thank you, Graham. Let's take a look at your national headlines. President Cyril Ramaphosa says the country's education sector has launched a new curriculum that caters for everyone. He was speaking at the opening of the basic education Le Kotla, which is underway in Boxburg on the East Rand. Attendees are focusing on the development of education over the past 10 years. Ramaphosa says the transformation is to create a more inclusive and diverse education landscape. And this means moving away from a fragmented curriculum offered by 18 different departments. And a major internet outage that left many internet users in South Africa frustrated was apparently caused by submarine cables on Africa's west coast were damaged. Internet services were also reportedly disrupted in other parts of Africa, the Middle East and the East and parts of Europe. Numerous online programs and applications, including Microsoft's Outlook and Teams, LinkedIn, WhatsApp and the social media network X, are among the services affected. It's unknown when the repairs of the cables near Abidjan in the Ivory Coast will be completed. And Algeria, a major oil and gas exporter, has awarded contracts to local and international companies to develop two solar energy products, pro, uh, projects with a combined capacity of 3,000 megawatts. Given the strength of the sun over Algeria, the south of the country could have some of the most productive solar power plants in the world. In an effort to reduce its reliance on oil and gas, the North African country aims to reach a renewable capacity of 15,000 megawatts and produce 27% of its electricity from wind, solar and hydro by the year 2035. And Israel's military has said it plans to move displaced Palestinians in Gaza to what is called humanitarian islands in the middle of the Strip, ahead of any offensive in Rafah. Some 1.4 million people are sheltering in the southern city after fleeing the fighting between, between Israeli troops and Hamas in northern and central areas. It's not clear how the islands will operate, but the military suggested that aid and temporary housing could be provided. The UN and US have warned that a full-scale assault of Rafah could be disastrous. And in anticipation of the upcoming Olympic Games, Paris has unveiled a stunning tapestry near the Eiffel Tower. Crafted by the talented French-Iranian artist Marjane Satrapi, the nine-meter-long triptych portrays Olympic athletes in action against the backdrop of the iconic tower and the Perusian skyline. Fashioned from wool and weighing 60 kilograms, this masterpiece took three years to complete. The artist humorously recalls feeling initially skeptical when commissioned for the project. The artwork, a testament to her skill and dedication, will be showcased in a venue at the Place de la Concorde starting from the end of June, offering spectators a captivating glimpse into the spirit of the Olympics. Well, that is where I leave your headlines. Let's take a final look at your sport with Graham. Thank you so much, though. The perfect prelude as we continue to delve into revel in the spirit of sport this morning. And Liverpool, they delivered last night a stunning display, netting four goals in just 14 minutes during an absolute dominant 6-1 victory over Sparta Prague in the Europa League tie and, of course, securing their spot in the quarterfinals. So despite already being 5-1 up from the first leg, Jurgen Klopp fielded a very strong lineup and reaped the rewards as they now march towards a potential quadruple. And, of course, this is his final stretch as manager, so what a send-off. Now we turn to rugby, and this one's going to warm the heart. Springbok lock Irvin Etzebeth achieved a very rare feat by clinching SA Rugby's Player of the Year award for the second consecutive year at the prestigious SA Rugby Awards, and justifiably so. Joining him in that double triumph was a rising star who's only just gotten started, Caden Moody, who secured the Young Player of the Year award for the second time as well. And then talk about putting your hand up. She had the most phenomenal season. Libby Janssen van Rensburg shone in the women's categories, earning recognition as both Springbok Women's 
Woman and Provincial Player of the Year for her outstanding contributions in 2023. And yes, she is still only getting started. I think a lot of franchises with their eyes on South Africa right now, and rightly so. The same applies to the men's side of the field. And the Sharks, they have, I think, um, achieved a kuya. They announced the return of Springbok centre Andre Esterhazen to Kings Park. That, of course, from the Harlequins as of next season. So his return to South Africa is motivated by family reasons, and that led to an early release from his contract with the Harlequins, which was set to expire only in 2025. And Esther Hazen's prolific performances at Harlequins, including a pivotal role in their Premiership title win in the 2020-21 season, they highlight the valuable contributions during his time in London and certainly underpin his role within the Springboks setup. And then we round off with tennis, and he is on fire at the moment. Yannick Sinner, the reigning Australian Open champion, continued his remarkable form, storming into the semi-finals of the ATP WTA Indian Wells Masters. So with a commanding 6-3, 6-3 victory over Czech Yeri Lacheka, Sinner, he's now extended his unbeaten streak to an impressive 19 games. This remarkable run includes a flawless 16-0 and record in 2024. And in fact, that stretches back to last year's Davis Cup finals. And Sinner's next challenge... It's a big one. It awaits in the form of young Carlos Alcaraz, who, of course, secured his spot in the semifinals by defeating Alexander Zverev. 6-3, 6-1 in the quarterfinals. So it should be a mouth-watering prospect, but that's where we leave our sports, or at least our sporting headlines for now. Let's take a look at the roads. Thank you, Graham. Let's start off with traffic in Sant and Johannesburg. There's heavy congestion on the N1 highway towards Winnie Mandela Drive. Maintain a safe following distance and make use of an alternative route to avoid any delays. In the foreshore in Cape Town, there's congestion on the N1 inbound. It's on the ramp to Lower Church. Expect delays. And in Somerset West Cape Town, there's some congestion on the N2 outbound. It is towards Victoria Interchange. Expect delays and add more travel time. That's your traffic. Let's take a final look at your weather. And today's weather across much of South Africa will be characterized by warm to hot temperatures with the possibility of thunder showers. The SA Weather Service has issued two warnings for today, a yellow level one for severe thunderstorms, resulting in heavy downpours, excessive lightning and damaging winds and large amounts of small hail. That is expected over the east of the northwest. And secondly, extreme high fire danger conditions are expected over most parts of the Northern Cape, the Central Karoo and the Langeberg municipalities of the Western Cape, the northwestern parts of the Free State and in places over Dr. Bayer Nudia and Walter Sisulu local municipalities in the Eastern Cape. It's time for a final sunrise view this morning and Joanne from Rockingham shared a beautiful sunrise view all the way from Perth. So look at that. Of course, they are well into their day already. If you would love to share your morning view, whether you are in South Africa or abroad, do so on our WhatsApp line. That number is 063-408-8863. Let's take a final look at your temperatures for today. much rainfall to be taken in today. I'm sorry, Uppington. Uh, let's see if we can temper that by making it rain. Lots of cash this March. Yes, we love the cheese on the show, especially when it's underpinned by 84 million rand. That is the guaranteed Powerball jackpot 
today, but you've got to play now to bag the big, big millions. Yes, you've got to play, and that means you need to buy your ticket. Now, there are various ways for you to do that. You can buy a ticket in store. You can buy a ticket on the nationallottery.co.za's website. You can do it through the mobile app, the cell phone banking, or you can dial star 120 star 7529 hash for USSD. Mm, and while we can't give you the winning numbers, unfortunately, or maybe you've already written them down, we can give you all of those details. So we'll keep them up on our social media pages so you can check them out whenever you are ready to go and embrace this brave new future that looks 84 million rand better, courtesy of a guaranteed Powerball jackpot today. It could be yours, but you got a panda pusher play. Oh, well, we are taking a trip down memory lane for a little bit of a flashback Friday. Nice. We're going to get nostalgic with a delicious crispy treat and chocolates and mellows. It's just going to be a sweet are, are we are we treatment. making mo uh, marshmallow crispy treats yes. are you oh yes. my word you yes. don't understand <laughs> i think our childhood will re-emerge then of course um, we got a little bit nervous because the last lioness is prowling around our studio hannah lee stain is here one of the greatest athletes this country has ever produced is on this couch right now and we are going to get the untamed version in just a moment stick around Let's count down your birthday from from five, ne? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, and action! Welcome to the third floor. Happy birthday, my beautiful, beautiful Zen. Girl, you're turning 30. Hectic, my lectic. Also, now that you're 30, I think it's time. I've got a few candidates that can be your boyfriend. I think you can see my excitement. Why? Because there is a massive sporting event on the horizon. It's one of the biggest. In fact, ABSA Cape Epic Mountain Bike Race is back. It's celebrating, in fact, its 20th anniversary. The hashtag She Untamed campaign was launched to encourage women to participate in cycling. And for their 20th anniversary, hashtag She Untamed is taken to a whole new height. So ABSA want to assemble 20 all women teams, that's 20 for 20, and we are here for that. Let's take a look at this incredibly empowering work that ABSA is, let's say, manifesting through their campaign, hashtag She Untamed. It's too soon, it's too hard, it's too difficult. You can't tell me that I can't do something. I'd rather try and fail than fail to try. It's like a, it's a chain and it's all linked. And sometimes you might be at the front of the chain being the puller and sometimes you're being pulled. On different days, you know, everyone can be suffering in a different way and, and need help in a different kind of manner. So the chain is in, interlinked. She Untamed is a community of women where APSA is supporting women to get them into mountain biking. They've introduced a mentorship program where we check in how they're doing, how can we support them better, what are their fears. I love showing people the, the passion that I have for mountain biking. I love showing people where you can go on a bicycle and, and now this opportunity has arrived to get someone across that line. because it is a hell of a feeling when you cross that line, because it is so hard, and it is the sort of Tour de France of mountain biking. They partner the novice riders with the experienced riders to ensure that 
all these women cross the finish line together. Nothing is impossible. It's through failure you learn. So I'm all about learning, I'm all about growth, and I feel like I'm like literally in first grade. I think that's the biggest thing, is to take someone who's maybe nervous or anxious or, or lacks confidence and just to see them shine. Knowing that somebody you admire so much believes in you is priceless. They want to help you be a better woman. It's something that I think all women need in their lives. The sisterhood is there. You feel like you're living among superwomen. It's not easy. It's, it's, I mean, there's lots of tears and suffering along the way. And sometimes it doesn't work out, but there's always growth. Sometimes when you get over a certain obstacle that you thought you couldn't do, and then you're like, I did that. I'm superhuman. <laughs> it, may, it makes my hair stand up when I see these girls. They're so positive. They're thinking big, and they can do it. APSA is really invested in seeing these women being supported. That is a huge opportunity for women in, in Africa. Uh, if I wasn't so excited, I'd be crying right now. She untamed, let her out the cage this year. Now, someone who has first-hand experience of the highs and the low, low, lows of the Absa Cape epic, um, the entire Absa Cape epic journey and narrative, Hanalee Stain, the last lioness. She is the last person to have participated in every single Absa Cape epic since numero uno since day one of the race and today Hanali joins us to tell us all about her journey with Absa Cape Epic and mountain bike racing and pretty much every other discipline you can push your brain your body to its limit through can we get a round of applause please um and, and it's when I said you were prowling through our studio, we cut to your gorgeous, happy, wonderful face. And I'm like, come on, just be more intimidating, please. Um, you represent something truly special here. And please take this from where it's coming. You're a beast. <laughs> You're an absolute beast. When I look at what you've done. So let's focus on the epic. Why? What is it about this race? And I know it stands alone in its own sporting kind of landscape. But for you, why has this been this common thread of your narrative? I think my story starts with, if I might say, grace first. A lot of grace, a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, tears and joy. But I think like everyone's story, and you ask me why, is that everyone's story starts with a dream. The vision, yeah. Um, and if your dream is, if, if to, to motivate you to chase that dream, you have to have passion. I have a lot of passion. Clearly. I have a lot of passion for what I do. I have a lot of passion for the sport of mountain biking. And obviously a lot of passion for the Absa Cape Epic. It's been 20 years of my life. Um, my kid would have been almost 21 now if I had a kid, the Absa kid. <laughs> well, and I suppose in essence you do. <laughs> you really I, do. I, and I it's do. a community of female cyclists. Exactly. It's like a couple of cubs. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, yes, it's for me, the race is, has become part of my life. Um, my, I've, I've achieved so many of the dreams. But, you know, if you stop dreaming, you die. So these new dreams and... Apps, the, the She Untamed initiative has really, really sort of flame, like put a new flame in that dream and that passion. You know, there are 21-year-olds there are sitting out there now who feel beaten and broken down by life that are listening to what you're saying, get off your butt, <laughs> get up, get moving, do something. You, there is a reason why this has been so successful for you. Is, is it down to a genetic trait? Were you blessed with a, a complete lack of a sense of reality to be able to do these? Because they're crazy. <laughs> one. one epic is crazy. Most people will build to, towards just doing one in their life and tick that box. What's different about you? Or is everybody have this inside it and they just haven't connected to it? I think so. I think if you really want to do something and you put your mind, definitely your mind to it, and you're willing to put the work into it. And it's not just... It's a consistent 
work of never giving up through the highs and the lows. Especially the lows. Definitely, yeah. but if you really are committed to do something, and it's not gonna fall out of, from the sky, it really is gonna take your fuss bait, the untameness of, of yourself and your inner self, but I think anyone, and I've seen it now, especially through the She Untamed initiative, um, APSA has really put a platform out there. They've gone all in. Yeah. They've gone all in. So, and, and the commitment that I've seen, especially from women, is just, it's, it's, a, it's a joy that I cannot describe because as a woman, this is what you want to see. You want to see this empowerment of n believing that you can, you can do anything that you put your mind to it. And, and I think not to put men at all out, we, we need men sometimes. <laughs> Occasionally. Um, we learn from them sometimes, but to see women just believing that anything, maybe with a little bit more blood and sweat and tears, but anything you want, you desire, if there's a passion and a commitment, yes, you It speaks can do to it. purpose. It speaks to yeah. purpose. And you are telling your story in the most dramatic way. I was joking about, a little bit off camera, about w when your, your streaming service um, autobiography movie biopic is going to come out because these stories do need to be told. It doesn't fall from the sky. It's born out of the mud, the exactly. blood, the sweat and tears. When you're out there racing and you're racing against fellow female competitors, not just representing a small smattering of up against the, the major players, that are the men, but when you feel this groundswell of women making their mark within the sport that you have blazed a trail in, how does that feel when you're out there competing? You know, we talked about it earlier, Tina and I, and it's, it's, it's a feeling, I think the word is yet to be found because it's a, it's a feeling that, that's, that has, there's no word. It, it's just like a feeling that makes you feel so big, joyous and, and it gives you a new drive. It's a superpower. Yeah, and to look around and to see your your comrades around you, when, and you see the woman smiling, woman with lipstick and nails, and nails are very important. Is that by, by day three? It's by day three. <laughs> and believe me, you will still see us smiling with the lipstick by day eight. And. This, it, it's just like I said. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really battling to put it into words because it's, it's a feeling too big. Well, I can understand it with someone who's interviewed forty thousand people easily. Forty thousand incredible athletes, thought makers, change makers, trendsetters. What you guys are doing, along with the, the female team within ABSA, hasn't been done before. Certainly not within the mountain biking space. We are all going to reach for those words because it's undiscovered, but now it is out the cage. It <laughs> is untamed. I love the fact that you do, yes, have some. We call you the last lioness. <laughs> uh, I think there are a few more lionesses now in the pride yes. that are going to put their paws up and make a massive impact. These events are life-changing, but they speak to a tribe, a community of people that will change your life. You just need to plug in and take that leap of faith. Absolutely amazing. Now, of course, the Absa Cape Epic will kick off with the prologue in the gorgeous Lawrenceford Wine Estate this Sunday, just to soften the blow a little bit. That's the 17th of March. Then the competitors will tackle the terrains in Stellenbosch, Wellington and Sanonsberg, some of the most exquisite backdrop you will ever see, whether on the back of a bike or not. And the race will be completed um, this uh, from this Sunday up until the 24th of March. It's an odyssey. And you can, of course, watch the Cape Epic live on their YouTube channel. Channel so you can see for yourself if that um, nail polish is going to stay on by day eight. But I'll tell you now, when we talk about the triumph of the human spirit, you're going to see it in spades. Oh, thanks, G-Man. Well, listen, we know the Tropica Island of Treasure. It is heading to Zanzibar with our very own Zanele Potelwa as the host and Bobby van Jarsveld, Mushle Gela, Chad Jones, Ndavi Nokeri, Carl Kuchelman, Nokubile Kwasi and Hungani Ndlovu. They are joining her on the island and who knows, you could be heading off to Zanzibar too. Now we have asked you to send in auditions. In fact, we've told you to enter. <laughs> Ordered you, I think. Is yes, we have. So should we take a look at some of those incredible entries please, we've please, gotten? Please. Okay. 
Hi, my name is Adrian Luce. I'm 25 years old. I was born in Bloemfontein, raised in Cape Town, and currently reside in Johannesburg, Houghton. If you need me to run, I will run. If you need me to share anything, I'll do it. I'm also known as the battle mess amongst my friends because I swim so fast underwater. Um, and water has always been a part of me because I was raised in Cape Town. So I always enjoy swimming. I always enjoyed fun activities at the beach. So you know I got you there. I'm also clever here. So any puzzle, anything that's given to us to solve, a mystery, anything, you know I got you with the brains as well. And that's my reasons why I think I'm a good fit for season 11, my job. My name is Gloria, I am 29 years old and I'm from Durban. I'm a full-time influencer, working and building my brand. I love to do things that allow me to be free. I love to do things that allow me to share joy and love and light with the world. And I'd love the opportunity to share that with you. I am a runner, but what I'll be packing in my bag there to go to Mauritius is sunblock, smooth moves, authenticity, and lots of love and light and joy. They taught me how to swim preschool, so I'm good. I can swim there with the dolphins and the fish and stuff, but like this. Yo, my people, my name is Bokan Diani. I am 22 years old. I am an actor, dancer, student, and content creator. And I think it's my chance to be part of Tropica Island of Treasure, specifically this season, season 11. And I rate, I have what it takes Firstly, I'm a winner. So place me with any celeb, give me any challenge, and Raoui. Secondly, I like a challenge, and I think this season is gonna be quite the challenge. And thirdly, besides looking good on the beach and making a good Baywatch reel, I'm actually a fan of Tropica. Uh, I love that, man. No, you nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. You guys clearly got the brief. I love the fact that we're seeing personality shine through. Um, I mean, some great entrants have come through. I feel sorry for our team having to now select who is going to be joining that amazing cast of celebrities going to Zanzibar to, of course, compete for their share of a million. But from now until the 4th of April, you guys at home stand the chance to win your share of 25,000 rand in cash by uploading your official hashtag Tropica Island of Treasure Zanzibar edition to social media. Definitely. Now simply tag at my Tropica and include that hashtag Tropica for a chance to win. And remember the contestants, in fact the seven contestants chosen to head to the Tropica Island of Treasure will receive 10,000 Rand before even getting to Zanzibar. Nice. And that's courtesy of Deep Heat. Now auditions close on the 5th of May, so get entering. This is your chance to win your share of 1 million Rand. Now that is smooth. Some T's and C's do apply. Life changing. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, we don't have to wait too long for a life-changing moment, maybe a life-affirming moment. The Cape Town Carnival is back, baby. It's going large this weekend, and it's lacquer. Oh, I saw the setups happening, and of course, it's all about the costumes and the dancing and the entertainment. So don't go anywhere. We've also got a very special Friday dance for you.
Back here, beauties. Um, it's been an amazing, inspirational show. I'm just reminded of how lucky I am to share my space with the incredible woman that I do. On days like this, it really does come to bear. And of course, one very special woman in Johannesburg right now, Zanella, must be feeling hopefully extra special today. Zanella, happy birthday! Yay! you guys thank you so much uh, oh. <laughs> okay we've got something for you indirectly just to wish you an absolutely okay. happy happy birthday um, and I love the fact that you okay. had your hair did for your birthday it yes. looks gorgeous I have not seen you with the same thank hair you. once this year which is mind-blowing to me but it is a massive birthday it's I won't even mention what age it is but it's a really important big age okay you see she's all grown up <laughs> now I love it but we do have a little surprise for you. Okay. Let's count on your birthday from five, ne? Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, and action! Welcome to the third floor! Happy birthday, my beautiful, beautiful Zan. Girl, you're turning 30. Uh, Hectic, my leg thick. Also, now that you're 30, I think it's time. I've got a few candidates that can be your boyfriend, so do you know what, Zanele? <laughs> you are the epitome of what great friends should be. My Patty Wap. I'm so proud of you, baby. So excited to see what you do with the next 30 years of your life. Take it easy on yourself. We're all there. We love you. We support you. You always think of other people's feelings. You're incredibly considerate. I hope and pray that you receive as much love and as much care and as much generosity as you give. Don't let anything or anyone deter you from your journey. I think God is aligning everything the way that it needs to be for you. Just stepping into this new chapter, love as boldly as you do, hold on to love. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, nor the battle to the strong, but time and chance still happens to us all. Be rooted in Christ, he'll always guide you. I love your spirit. I I love the kind of person you are. I love your laugh. Mom and dad, ourselves as your siblings, everybody is rooting for you, your friends. You are a chosen family. Follow your heart because <laughs> your heart is amazing. Your heart is pure. Keeping you even when it makes people uncomfortable, God, even if God. it's too much for some people, for the people that love you, it's perfect. Treat yourself like Jesus died on the cross for you. And everything that you've been working so hard for, personally and professionally, <laughs> really is for this moment. Thank you for all the stuff that you've done with me, for me. I, I could never put it into words how much I love you. I'm wishing you all the love, blessings. Happy birthday, my Basil. Oh, oh Marissa, oh. we just wanted you to know how oh, loved you God. are. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Guys, oh. uh, you, you made me cry on national television. <laughs> what is this? Oh, it's the only Guys, way we get to show oh. you our love. Oh, Zanelli, I've got to ask, when you see the impact that you make on the no! people close to yes! you, look at how that. Are you doing that. I hope it sinks in how amazing you are. Happy birthday, girl. Happy birthday, Zanelli. Oh, my word. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> guys, so what are you what are you guys doing here? I'm, I'm so confused. Uh, guys, my lashes are gonna fall off. <laughs> guys, I love you so much. Oh uh, my goodness. I don't know what to say. I don't Happy have birthday. thank you. We love you so much. It's your special day. It's 30 years now. You're successful, you've made it. Tropic <laughs> Island of Treasure. You're just gonna keep going on and on and higher and higher. And I love you so much. Oh, I love you. <laughs> oh, we're still alive. What's we're still happening? <laughs> we're still alive. I love you so much. Yo. How are you guys? Like, I'm so confused. Thank you. I'm shaking. I love you guys more. Thank you. Have a nice day. I literally couldn't have, like. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so weird. I'm supposed to see you guys on radio. I'm not supposed to see you guys. I'm just going to Cape Town. I'm so <laughs> guys, I love you.
you so much. We love you, we love you. We're still you. doing TV, so I have to listen to what people are telling me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you. I am because you are, like genuinely. Aww. So thank you so much. And thank you like to you guys. Someone's showing me my crown. What am I fixing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much to you Cape Town family. You guys are amazing. Like we've only been family for what, like a month and a bit. And you guys are like already doing things like this. And you made me feel like it's home. And I can say that as well, thank you to the Joburg family. Like, we asked for a year end after, what, two weeks of knowing each other. <laughs> so thank you, guys. I love you so much. Thank you, Cape Town. Thank you, Joburg. And thank you to my loved ones. You guys mean everything to me. Thank you. I love you guys. And thank you, South Africa, because you're partying with me. Yeah, baby. That's how we do it. Oh, she has had the most stellar journey over the last year, I think. This year, her 30th on this planet is going to be without a doubt her most impactful. She is all about that love and light and joy. You heard it from the people closest to you, and that's what you give us every day. We love you, girl. Happy birthday. We won't I bother you, you until guys. Tuesday morning. Go and have a party. <laughs> oh, yes. Zanele, we love you. Thank you, guys. Oh, I love weird. you, guys. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you, my family. <laughs> Oh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Celebrate World Sleep Day with Restonic this 15th of March on Expresso with a chance to win one of 10 Restonic Bazaruto queen size beds, each valued at 5,999 Rand. Retailing at this price until the end of March. So to enter, WhatsApp the keyword Expresso to 011 298 9999 and tell us Restonic believes in the power of sleep. True or false? Competition closes on March the 15th. T's and C's apply. Welcome back as the celebrations continue and hopefully you're feeling this love and joy at home. And if not, well, let's fill that cup back up this weekend. Cape Tonians and those that are traveling down are spoilt with the Cape Town Carnival extravaganza free of charge. Spectators will be entertained by the most amazing floats along the flan, uh, fan walk in Greenpoint this coming Saturday. I'm underselling it completely. Oh. So I think the right people to plug into are sat beside me. We've got the performance director and one of our absolute favorites, Miss Tracy Carter, as well as the founder of the Cape Town Hello. Carnival, uh, trustee Mr. Anton Liebenberg. And they are here to tell us everything that we need to know about the Cape Town Carnival this weekend because it's lacquer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it what is. it is. It's one of the <laughs> coolest experiences you can plug yourself into, whether you're involved, yeah. whether you're performing, whether you're benefiting from the upswing in commerce around you, yeah, yeah, yeah. or whether you're just a fan having an absolute lacquer jaw. Definitely. Um, this is your heart. Your heart lies in one of those floats. Maybe there's a big float with a heart on it that is yours. <laughs> but uh, what is it about? What you have built here that is so successful, because getting something like this going and keeping it going is so challenging, never mind the COVID era. Yeah. Uh, but you guys have built something that speaks so much more than just the parts coming together. Mm. Anton, I think you're the best to speak to that. <laughs> what is it about this carnival that just works, my friend? It's 
It's pulling our community together as Cape Townians. Cape Townians have somebody else, the, the absolute lady spoke about passion. Mm. Cape Townians have passion. For sure. They want to express that passion, and we've created a, a, a format and an environment for them to, to, um, to express that passion, yeah. As a performer, you kind of play multiple roles here yeah. because you're part of the designer of it in yeah. terms of the creative content. Yeah. For the performers and creating something like this, how does it work? Because it's always yeah. different. Yes, yeah. we've got a theme, but you let yeah. everybody shine. You give the license for exactly, everybody exactly. to really show their Cape yeah. Tonian <laughs> um, How yeah. do you get that balance right? Um, it, it's a beautiful journey, I think, you know, where we, where we, yes, we've got our themes, but then we've got this diverse panel of, of performers, different cultures, different styles, and we want them to all bring their essence, but still fuse together to create something different and something beautiful. And I think that's what's so spectacular it's when you see these different groups of people performing together and and how they they've journeyed with each other over these past few months and grown in relationship old and young black and white it's Pull just their beautiful. hair out and I'm wanted to kill each other <laughs> and then come Pull through the other side yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone makes it through i'm just yeah. going to put that as a little proviso there not everyone makes it yeah. onto the onto the float no it is it's just lacquer yeah. It's just lacquer. a lacquer day out. It is. Um, uh, easy connection for me to make, but yes. what, what does that theme mean to you guys? Say the word lacquer without smiling. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it, oh, it talks that. to our ethos, it talks to our celebrating Cape Townians, yeah. celebrating life. And I think Cape Town, I think the theme lacquer is really quite pertinent this year. We, you can't say it without smiling. It's just blacker. Yeah. When you yeah. had to explain that to the performers and the yeah. creative kind of uh, this, this yeah. incredible brains trust that you yeah. represent, mm. how did they respond to the theme and how have people embraced this? Because it's carte blanche to just be lacquered. Which yeah. can go yeah. anywhere. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And and I think it, it almost evolved, you know, as we were like exploring, we want to we want to showcase this. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's our culture and it's our community. And how do we sum all this up? You know, how do we how do we how do we put an umbrella on all of this? And it's just, yeah. it's all liquor, you know? How else do you say it? And it's a word that is in every culture, in every ethnicity. Exactly. Um, we all identify with it. And I think that's what's so beautiful. It's that it's our word, you know? It's not just one specific culture. I, so. I can just see the, the amazing security officers and, and our Cape Town police just saying someone, a party reveler that's pushing the, the boat yeah. out a little too far. Just be yeah. lacquer. Just be lacquer. Just, just be lacquer, boys. Just, just, just let's, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that yeah. speaks to the, yes. the size of this event because the yeah. whole community, the whole of Cape Town is yeah. involved in this yeah. one. Yes. You need to keep people safe. You yes. need to, to transform the city while you're doing that. Yes. How do you get that balance right? Being, being a first and foremost family event, yeah. and we've been very, as, as trustees, uh, we've been very focused on it, at being a family event. We want you to bring your five-year-old. We want you to put him on your shoulders, bring him through. So we have extensive security. We have something like 270 private security. We have disaster volunteers. We have SAPs, EMS, traffic. Half-naked firemen. <laughs> Don't talk but they're not, they're not working. They're not on duty. <laughs> no, no, I, I have yet to be able to control all women, including my wife, when those firemen come out. I'm feeling intimidated, guys. I'm feeling intimidated. Monet, I struggle to control myself when I see you, boys. Yeah. So it's OK. It's OK. I get it. Uh, I, I'm sorry, finish So, so yeah. no, just, to, just to, to reassure you, it's, it's not chaotic at all. Mm. It is a family ev event. It's a fun event. We have a 1.2 kilometer stretch where you can stand on both sides of it. People, when I invite people to the carnival, they think, oh, hordes of millions of yeah, craziness. It's, it's not no. throngs, it's, 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 it's beautiful chaos. Well, uh, and that's what that stretch was designed for. Exactly. So, so exactly. for me, when we talk, and I, I can't believe I'm even saying this, but the 2010 legacy yes. is yeah. lived yeah. through events yeah. like this. So exactly. well done for taking that yeah. and embracing it. But most importantly, thank you for just being lekker. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. And it's going to be extra lekker because yeah. we've actually got youngster performing on one of our floats Ooh. this year. Yeah. But he's, so. the, he's the only one who's a, allowed to be extra lecker extra at the event. The rest of us must just be lecker. <laughs> he okay? has the license to be lecker. <laughs>
<laughs> he does. In fact, he's been paid to be extra lacquered. Um, and some of that extra lacquerness will spill over onto you. And we'll give you a taste of that in just a moment. But there you can see it. It is going down this weekend. And it is fall free at the Greenpoint Fan Walk. It is a spectacle, but you've got to be involved. Hmm. Oh, Graham, you nearly caught me eating another marshmallow. Listen, Easter, it is nearly upon us. And in true fashion, Beacons Mellows, they're joining us for the ride. Now, we are taking a trip down memory lane, a little bit of a flashback Friday, and we are revisiting some of our favorite nostalgic recipes, bringing back some of our fondest memories. Now, this is a recipe that is very dear to my heart. It is those chocolate crispy treats, and I am going to show you how to make it. So, Graham, I need you to come and join me for this delicious recipe, because, yes, we have our puffed rice right here. You, you are going back and addressing my childhood. Okay, so my mom used to make the most amazing different dishes, but for some reason, rice crispy treats or these kinds of crunchy treats just weren't a part of the... And when I got to, like, the school fates or other kids' parties, I would eat, like, 20. You would eat all of own. it. You don't understand. There is something so amazing about the gooiness mixed with the crunchiness. It's special. It is delicious. So, Graham, mm. I have some melted butter. I've just added our cocoa because we want that chocolatey flavour. For sure. You have a ma an amazing beacon egg in front of you, so Thank you have the honours of chopping that up oh, for I us. Oh, I thought it was just for me to eat. Okay. And we're I'll, going to I'll add to that yeah. to the pot, and I'm going to get our marshmallows in here, and we want these to really get coated in the chocolate. We want them to melt down, so I'm just going to dial up the heat. I just oh. turned it down because I was so scared the butter would burn, but we're just going to slowly allow this to heat and become the 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 stickiness amongst <laughs> it all because you know it's, it's it's these rice treats are all about l eating the residue off your fingers. Oh, for sure, you need maximum gooiness. Okay? Gooiness, yes. Gooiness. Um, oh. I'm sure Carl would say unctuousness or something oh. along those lines, you know? Definitely. Uh, sorry, I, I don't think there's an official technique for chopping up a chocolate Easter egg. No, okay, you, you just, just go for it. Your thing. I think it's more just for fun. We could have just <laughs> broken it up or crushed it. get the it. taste buds fully I engaged to the mean, olfactory senses. Cool. If you think about it, for generations, South Africa's favorite marshmallows have sparked imaginative family activities and created lasting memories. I mean, how many do we not have around the fire or late at night or at sleepovers? Well, it's still the first thing that I'm, I have to get when we're having a bride. It's not the meat, not the ribeye. I've no. got to get the marshmallows for my kids and then I always forget the skewers and I'm like, ah! Dad so forgot uh, the skewers. <laughs> exactly. You can come and add our chocolate in here. Because oh we also want to add some word. sweetness to it. Because cocoa powder, it has a bitterness for to sure. it, which is delicious. Mm. But if you are going to make this for kids, they don't want dark chocolate. They no, want they the want, milk they, chocolate. Yeah, they want maximum sweetness. I get that. But just looking at this mixture in itself, I can imagine my little man who has got his granny's sweet tooth just oh. bouncing off the walls um, out of excitement. And you can get the kids to help you with parts of this process. Obviously, when working with the really hot stuff, that's when dad or mom kicks over. But with the little ones, the more they can be invested, the better. Definitely. So now we're going to add our popped rice, our crispy rice. And this is now where you just have to be a little bit patient because the marshmallows melt really quickly. But you want to get everything coated. Ah, uh, okay. And this is where definitely parental adg advice is around. Um, again, you're going to blow my mind now. I'm seeing our mm, mellows and the brand new flavour. And it's almost like it sparked a neural pathway that I didn't know I had, trying to figure out what this is exactly. It feels so kind of South African. Yes. Can I have another taste? Do you Go mind? For I've it. got it. Give just it, for the it, sake of being thorough, this is scientific, okay? Give it a so this taste. Is not because I'm just craving the mmm, mellow deliciousness. Okay. What are you, are you tasting the cinnamon and the spices mm. that I'm tasting? Okay, I'm gonna grab a cloth because that is mm. piping hot. It's like I used to love fireballs when I was younger with that cinnamony kind of vibe with the kick. It's got a bit of that. It kind oh. of warms you up while you eat it. Are you going to help me okay, just to decant our puffed rice? <laughs> it's, it's a chunk, so okay, you're going to have to get it in go. there. And, and I like the fact that you've acted so quickly because um, you don't want the crisp to be uncrisp. No, you don't want to lose the crisp. There we oh, go. Well done, and then my we friend. just flatten it out. I'll use the back of the wooden spoon to maybe make it a bit easier. And once it's cooled down, just slightly. 
and oh you can then cut it into squares or into little shapes that you would like. Of course, is squares it, are just the best. Is it is it spicy pumpkin? Is it spicy pumpkin flavour? It's giving me kind of Halloween vibes, maybe. I'm I'm st I'm going to stick to my cinnamon. I don't know cinnamon. Uh, milk I'm, I'm tart. Sticking. I'm getting wow. This is blowing my mind. I'm going to have to take this packet with me so I can keep testing. And I'm going to palate cleanse and then taste again. And by the end of today, I will have figured it out. But you guys need to do the heavy lifting with this one, I think. Oh, well, listen, here we go. We have wow, our delicious so. crispy treats. And for you, Mallows is launching a new flavor. We've been trying really hard to guess which one it is, but perhaps you would love to give it a go and let us know what this flavor could be. Now you stand a chance to win one of six Clicks vouchers valued at 1,500 Rand nice. each. Now simply reply to the competition post. It is a question on our Expresso Facebook, our X or Instagram pages, and tell us your guess of what the new flavor could be. We've given you some hints as to what we are tasting, Oof. But that's all it is, it's hints. But here is a clue. Think about which pastry is commonly associated with Easter holiday and a, has a hot, in fact, a soft, fluffy texture. Don't forget, that's all we're giving you as a clue to include that hashtag, let the hunt begin. The competition will close on the 27th of March and there are T's and C's that can be found on our website, expressoshow.com. So good luck. To you literally you. just seized my brain trying to think of those clues connecting it with the taste there. With the taste. Okay, you've earned the right Ooh. after creating those. Get stuck we in. We're going to get in there. Okay. Mm. Oh my word. Oh. And it's got the crunch, eh? It's sweet, it's crunchy, it's sticky, it's delicious. <laughs> it's, it's the texture. Chewy. Mm -hmm. and the texture is amazing. Mm. It's a good texture. Oh, well done. I don't know what the rest of the crew is going to eat today, but this has got me sorted lunch and dinner. Absolutely amazing. Well, if you think you know, if you can figure out what the Mallow's new flavor mm. is, please let us know because we are absolutely stumped, flabbergasted mm -hmm. at the moment. But if it tastes this good, I don't care what flavour it is. Mm. We're taking a quick break. When we get back, we have a Friday dance, but not just anyone. We have the Cape Town Carnival in Yay. studio. We're going to dial up the volume, so we'll see you now. Mm. It's my feel-good breakfast show. I was hoping we'd come back and you could still hear the crunching sounds next to me. <laughs> I will kick this one off as we enjoy the last remnants of our, our beautiful chocolate crispy treats. But of course, your day could be even better than that if you make it rain lots of cash today. And when I say lots, I mean a guaranteed 84 million rand. 
in our Powerball jackpot mm. today. But you've got to play now to bag these big, big millions. The biggest ever. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Well, you can buy your tickets in store today. You can buy it on the National Lottery's website. You can buy it through the mobile app. You can even buy it through your cell phone banking or by dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for USSD. Mm, and we will keep all those details up on our Expresso social media pages so you can go and check them out whenever you want and then just go and pick your numbers and put yourself in the running to win the millions. A life-changing, everybody's life will change. 84 million guaranteed. That's the Powerball jackpot today and it could be yours if you punned up. Push a play. Well, we promised you a Friday dance and taking the stage right now, we have members from various groups that will be performing at the Cape Town Carnival. So let's take a look. Ma. Young star. Why you want to dust me? Just be liquor. Don't be extra, just be liquor. Think you give and you bitter, just be liquor. Okay, but whatever, just be liquor like I'm so liquor, 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 liquor. I'm so liquor, 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 liquor. She so liquor, 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 liquor. We so liquor, 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 liquor. My blue baby. Always been liquor like we sister, we sister. Always been liquor like we sister, we sister. Liquor, 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 liquor. We so liquor, 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 liquor. Sugar, 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 Uh, those outfits, I have the playlist, the energy. Girls, please take a little curtsy so we can see those outfits one more time. You are amazing. The choreography there was stunning. I'm so glad I was only there for about three seconds because uh -huh. that was unbelievable. And you get to plug in this weekend. Definitely. Well, I believe in Joburg, they also have a Friday dance. Let's see what's happening there. Yes, I'm linking. What am I linking? Everybody, thank you for celebrating my birthday with me. Let's go.
Add a spoonful of love to all your favorite things and sweeten it your way with Clover's sweetened condensed milk. Another feel-good production.